But John will come to my office all the time. Like, I don't, I don't feel I'm doing enough. I'm like, you don't feel like you're doing enough? You do so much shit. You're on movie talk. You're on, you produce counsel. You produce heroes. You're on a sports show. You're on a wrestling show. What, what else do you want to do? <laughs> so you going to fucking do the lawn? What do you, what do you want to do? You fucking racist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. How you doing? Uh, we're back. It's the uh, one-on-one show with me, Christian Harloff. And if you've been listening to the Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One, wherever you listen to it on audio, then you'll uh, you'll know that Mark Riley's show, The Riley Roundtable, has made its way over here, and we're happy to have him, as well as some of uh, Steve Weintraub, Frosty's interviews. There's all one-on-one interviews, and they're all on this feed, but I'm back. I've been gone for a little bit, but I'm back now doing some interviews once again. You can catch, I guess you just heard the Chris White's episode. That was from Collider Live, and I'll be doing that. Any celebrity guests that kind of come in, and we will piece out that, put it on this feed. But the sit-down, long-form video ones here, um, this is going to be a lot of my close friends right now and people that I work with. And, and John Roca fits into both those categories. He's someone I've known for a long time, and I really wanted to get to know him. And, man, I, I, um, I've known so much about him, obviously, over the 20 years that we've known each other. But I learned a lot more about him today, and you will too. Obviously, you know that Roka can be intense, he can be passionate, he can be kind, he can be a douche, he can, <laughs> he can be a lot of things. I'm, I'm joking. He could be, a, he could be kind sometimes. No, he's, he's, a, he's a good guy, and, um, and I really enjoyed talking with him. And we, we got into it, man. We really, um, really went deep. So I hope you enjoy this. You get a little bit more on The Outlaw. Here it is. This episode of One-on-One with Christian Harlow is brought to you by Rode Microphones and My Rode Reel. We've been talking about this for a little bit here. It's uh, the world's largest short film competition. Right now, there are over 1,000 1,000 short films battling to win $1 million worth of prizes, and you can help by voting for your favorite films. There's drama, there's comedy, sci-fi. They're all in there, so head on over to www.myroadreel.com. Don't really need the www. You guys know that. By now, I mean, you've been using the internet long enough, but it's myroadreel.com. You watch some films, you vote now for your favorite. You like movies, you like new things, you like helping people, well, go do it. Hey, welcome back to One on One with me, Christian Harloff. I've been, uh, I've been away. I've been away for the last couple of weeks. We, did, we had one episode on this feed, which was the uh, excerpt from Collider Live, which you can find Monday through Wednesday on either its own podcast feed or on the uh, Collider Video channel. We talked to director, writer Chris Weitz, which was amazing. That is up. Uh, Riley Roundtable is now on this podcast feed. So there's been content for sure, but I, I, I've i been out and now I'm back. And I was like, well, who, who am I going to have my first guest back? I'm going to have somebody that people want to hear from. So I couldn't find any. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I um, I actually I brought in my good buddy John Roca here because I haven't. Uh, he's one of the people on my list that I've wanted to talk to and kind of get to know even more so than I already do. Yeah. And this is kind of the setting to do so. And and what one on one is now going to become because we have Clyder Live and we're going to have all these celebrity guests that kind of come in there and we can yeah. do the standard interviews. But one on one will kind of serve more. Like this, to get to know the people that you guys are familiar with in Collider or the movie space or personalities that you're already familiar with. And yeah. there's things I want to know. And I know you've talked about a lot of shit before on other podcasts. I mean, you've got yeah. Outlaw Nation. Right. You've got all these things that you've been open and honest with. And you, you, you've you never shied away from being honest and, and yeah. very brave with a lot of stuff that you've gone through in your life and things that you've shared. And, Thanks, man. And, well, it's scary sometimes, you know, yeah. on this in this um, culture that we're in, not even in the movie space, yeah. but in the Internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, let's talk about you, because I know you, you and Ellis share kind of like a, a bond, because you guys grew up around the same area? Yeah, in Virginia. Yeah, yeah northern Virginia. Were you mostly. born in Virginia? No, no, I was born in Philly. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we, my parents lived there for about six months, and then we moved down to D.C., to be closer to my father's family. Okay. That was it wasn't my, work stuff, it was, it was family work? No, no, it wasn't work okay. stuff. It was definitely family stuff. Right. You know, because uh, like I've said before, they're, uh, I'm the son of two Bolivian immigrants, mm-hmm. you know, from South America, Bolivia. Um, and uh, they, it, tradition is very, family is very big. Yeah. And it's tradition there. And so a lot of my uh, dad's family had moved down to D.C. in the process after being born. So they kind of followed suit. My okay. mom went with him because that was the tradition. So, you, so that was it. You went from Philly to, yeah. to what got them to Philly in the first place? Uh, well, uh, my mom, uh, when she came over she came over when she was 18 years old straight okay. out of high school got a job uh working in philly through an exchange program oh so they met in philly they met in philly oh, yeah, cool. yeah yeah in nursing home and, and then dad, they had the outlaw then then they had the outlaw wow right. who, so knew? Only, who knew only child 
Uh, no, I've got a brother and you a got sister. A brother and sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never, we don't talk about that well, too much. Well, we're all such independent people. My yeah. brother does his own thing. Okay. He's a computer science engineer. Older, um, younger? Uh, younger. Two, younger. A little less than two years younger than me. Are you? The, were you the first? Yeah, you're I'm the, the first. first. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I'm the I, older brother. Yeah, well, you don't talk about your siblings as much. I'm not, I mean, that, no, that's, and that, that's maybe because you want to let people in. Do you guys yeah. get along? Or uh, my brother and I don't. We don't okay. really talk. Understood. Uh, he's um, he's a, like a Bobby Fisher type guy. He's oh. like a genius, yeah. but he's also a little at times paranoid about the world. Oh, I and understand. So it's that kind of thing. So we don't really find a lot of common ground. Yeah. And so we've just found it better to not necessarily have conversations because we never end in good ways in conversations because we have different opinions. I had a similar conversation with I mean, similar relationship mm-hmm. with my brother who passed. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. He's very a genius type uh, when it comes to, to music. Mm-hmm. And everything too. We we didn't really have many arguments uh, towards the, the last like ten years. Um, right. We. I was very kind of sympathetic to his situation, and, mm-hmm. but it, you know it's it's weird because you were, you're bonded by blood, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, he was to me. He was my my younger brother was just I, I, he was my younger brother, and I and whatever he needed, I was I was on the phone with him, talking to him, and and making sure that he was okay. But there was always that not disconnect. That's not the right word, but the like you said before, yeah, not the same people. Yeah, yeah. So like. Do you? Where does he live? He lives with my mom still. Oh, he does. Yeah, he okay. is. He yeah. is. Yeah, like I said, he's just. He's never. He's only moved out of the house once for six months, uh, but other than that, he has stayed with my mom with my dad. Now there is a good thing in that that yeah. my brother was there all through my father's cancer, and then now like he is, uh, you know, companion for my mom. And they have a their own relationship, yeah. and it's a, a, a weird dysfunctional mother a son relationship. But you know. There's only so much I can do in that, and yeah. I, and we're all such independent people that it's like I can't make my mom do anything or dad, my son, I mean my brother do anything or my sister do anything. And so. it isn't it funny how it shifts though when you're younger, you have like this kind of maybe frustration and anger, yeah. Of like, well, what are you doing? Yeah. You should be doing this, and you realize people are who they are, mm-hmm. and there's certain things you can't understand what people are going through, yeah. and you then become more compassionate yeah. towards it and understanding towards it. And like, like you just said with your mom, it's like they have their relationship. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. Right, right. And it's best to let it go because you can't let it like weigh on weigh on you yeah. and destroy your life and make you feel like you're walking through molasses. Right. You've just got to come to terms with it and move on with your life yeah. and, and be okay with that. And what about your sister? My sister's great. Yeah. We, we have a great, she's seven years younger, so okay. she was she was a little bit of an of an accident in that way, but okay. um, but a, a very much welcomed accident in that way. And Oh man, so uh, you must have been getting into fights. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We had a lot of battles. <laughs> no, no not, not you two. You against other guys yeah, coming yeah. knocking oh, on the door. Well, I trained my sister. My brother and I, you know, before this, the the yeah. break happened yeah. with us when I was in my t- mid twenties. My sis- my brother and I trained my sister to fight. Okay. Like we were like, this is what our father didn't do for us and should have. Uh-huh. We are going to handle this and teach you. How to- so my sister was never a person to get abused or assaulted. She or could handle like her we, shit. Yeah, yeah, we made sure that she didn't have any issues because we weren't going to be there in any of those preparatory schools yeah, yeah. to help her through those processes. You know, sometimes kids are within a year or two of each other, siblings, and so they can help each other in high school or middle school or elementary school. Right. And we couldn't have that, so we taught. My- so my sister would get into fights all the time and, and not in a negative way like she just she protected her. herself yeah, yeah she did yeah, yeah, yeah. like she punched a, a kid in first grade like off his bike in oh his wow stomach, because in he was stomach. talking some shit yeah, yeah he was making fun of her and her friends right and then in middle school again and then she had her in high school. In the yeah i mean seriously yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a uh, very happily married two kids uh they're in virginia about 20 minutes away from my mom in manassas oh okay yeah yeah and they have, uh, have two kids yeah they have two kids See, I have a niece and a nephew. i'm learning so much about yeah, you too and i love them to pieces yeah and how old are your niece uh one one is seven, the other is six. Oh wow! So, yeah, okay, yeah. so that They're makes a lot of sense. Well, because for people who don't know, um, anytime I, I I have I have a I have two daughters, and one of the um, my oldest is almost seven, mm. and so anytime I come in to show uh, John a picture or a video, he's he, you can see him like light up. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I can see the uncle in you yeah, when yeah, you yeah. do it too. So plus, I love your kids. No, good. I know, I know, and I and I definitely appreciate that too. Yeah. But um, you know, so that's interesting. So your sister and you're very very close. Yeah. you had mentioned. I don't want to get back. Too much yeah. because I just just so we can tell the story here. Sure, you said in the twenties that your your brother and you. Wh- yeah. what happened? Well, I think it was the beginning. Like my brother and I were really tight growing up, and you know, because we kind of had our dad to kind of rebel against. Because my dad was a really strict, uh, old school, traditional okay. Latino guy, macho yeah. guy, all yeah. that kind of. So he used to spank us and make give us do chores and make us different do, time now. Isn't yeah, it? oh my yeah, god, yeah, yeah. three quarters of the shit, nine tenths of the shit. My dad did. Yeah. We, he couldn't get away with now, but. All that kind of, but it, in the end, it served us because he was trying to instill discipline in us uh, to live, to survive in the world. Yeah. You know, and 
Uh, so for him, that was his, the, he was that, that way. And so my brother and I would always like band together against my dad and figure things out. But, you know, you grow up and you start to have your own experiences. My brother was, uh, my brother and I are both very sensitive people, but he was more sensitive than I was. <laughs> really? Yeah. And wow. so he would take betrayals deep within himself yeah. and I came to terms with betrayals like this is just life this is what happens you see it in the movies TV shows betrayal just happens yeah. so you learn to process it my brother took them as uh, indications of these kind of people mm -hmm. you know I can't trust these people I can't trust that people like you said before so it's him kind of against the world a little exactly, bit too. Yeah, exactly yeah. so as I, I came home for the military in my 20s and uh, my brother had been pushing back against me through that time and then eventually, because of why? Because of the Because you joined the military? No, uh, he he was initially proud of that, but oh. I think he felt that I that you know I wasn't the best older brother. I would flat out admit that because why I had that? Like I what? had my own shit I was processing. Because like my brother, I was sensitive too. So yeah. the stuff my father did to me, and, and and to a lesser extent, my mom is not being quite as strong. Like I took that to be um, something that messed me up a lot because my dad made me ashamed of my sensitive nature and he wanted to kind really? of make me this macho guy and so my entire and I know this now through therapy my yeah. entire teens and uh, uh, formative years and 20s was the f b fight between this macho thing he instilled in me this supposedly man yeah, strong yeah, thing yeah. battling against a sensitive guy who just wanted to like enjoy be loved and love people and be like so it was this kind of he made it seem weakness so i hated myself for it wow. so i walked around all the time with this very powerful undercurrent of hate for who I was. And I couldn't accept myself. So when anyone tried to accept me or try to be, I would kind of push them away. Yeah, yeah, push them away. Well, that's hard though, too, them. because like, you, you know, I, and I know you so well at yeah. this point, your first instinct is probably like, well, I want to talk to my dad about this. You know, I can't talk to my yeah, dad about this. Yeah, I couldn't. Because wow. he's, the, yeah. And, right. and I didn't even know he was the reason oh, for all of this until really? therapy. That's oh, the thing. Shit. I thought I was just born with this thing that I, that I was, different than everyone else that I was somehow more damaged than everyone else yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. I was less than everyone else and no matter how much I enjoyed my life I was still I had this undercurrent of depression that I wasn't even aware was depression right. like I just had this undercurrent of sadness through my whole life so my brother but you had a great mustache I did thank you yes I did <laughs> <laughs> so you see some of those I look like a, I look like I should be bombing a plane but like my my brother um was even more in that, so he felt the need to defend and protect because I was going through my shit. Like I'm not a, I'm not a hero or victim in the situation. It just was yeah. right, and so my brother and I would have these battles as he was entering into his twenties and him trying to affirm who he is right. as a man. And so we would have these terrible like uh, verbal fights. And then one day, uh, one Sunday over breakfast. Uh, he said something and I said something. It was an exchange and it built and it became this whole battle. My sister got involved, my mother got wow. my dad, and I, uh, I, I, at the, and I d disappeared. Like I didn't come back to the house. Um, for like weeks really? on, on, was that to big, visit. That big of a blow Yeah, it wow. was huge. And, and they took his side on it? They, no, they just, I didn't, my dad got, so there was a, just a lot of issues. Yeah, there was a lot yeah. of issues growing up. It wasn't a very happy household, to okay. be honest with okay. you. My mom was great. My mom is incredible. Incredible piece of iron. Always with a smile on her face. Deal with all this. Dealt with all this crap. But my dad had his own issues to work out, which we did later in life, my yeah. dad and I. But at that time, it was a lot of drama, a lot of tension. So I, I don't come from the happiest of homes necessarily. Well, when you – so much in that. Yeah. And um, to – really, there's so many questions I have because when mm. you look at – First of all, like you said, two Bolivian immigrants to kind of come over and yeah. make, make their way. Mm -hmm. That right off the bat, there, there's a defense that goes up because it's oh, like yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make my way. Because we're looking at what the 50s and 60s here, right? When they came over, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So right then and there, it's like, okay, how do we make our way? How do we do this? How do we get accepted from this culture that is not going to be super accepting, right. especially in that time? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So there's the chip one that probably mm -hmm. comes on to your desk because. Uh, and and to guess, I would probably guess that your dad. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here. I, I, this is the first conversation mm. really we had about it. But it, I would assume that your dad probably was putting on the same front that you that you had because yes. it seems there was a lot of emotions kind of going inside well, inside of him. That yeah. was the irony we discovered later in life when my father got diabetes, and then really when he got diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. All of a sudden, he could talk about the fact that he was a sensitive kid too growing up, and he went through a lot of terrible shit uh, in Bolivia and coming into this country through his so, father and stuff too. Yeah. Through, well. His biological father was great to him, but he died when he was ten years old from a brain injury. Oh shit! So what had been a very happy How house? How did he get the brain injury? Uh, 
working in Bolivia, he, the, they, my dad was uh, uh, the son of a farm, farmers. They, yeah. So they're down there, what we call campesinos. They're, they were living there in Cochabamba in Bolivia. And, uh, Sounds like a cool place, though. Well, it's, Co- what you, where, Cochabamba. it's where Sosa lives in Scarface. Oh, when they shit. see Cochabamba, Bolivia, there when they go to the forest, Fucking that's badass. where... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they, they had a farm, everything like that. So he, he got injured on the farm somehow yeah. and, and died from that. Damn. And it was a very happy house. But then my grandmother, who really wasn't the nicest of people, went out to the clubs trying to hide, find a guy. So she would bring home guys all the time. Damn. She was dancing around. And people think, oh, it's the traditional stuff. No, there were some wild people in all generations, in all decades. Sure. So she... She went out to, and she ended up marrying the stepfather who was a real violent drunk and was abusive took physically. It, out on your dad. it took it out on my dad because my dad looked like my his the guy who was married to my mom first. And so whenever he saw him, he saw competition. Right. And so he was very abusive to my father and forced oh, him shit, out man. of the house. A lot of this stuff makes I mean, you know, yeah. again, like I like I said, I know you really well, like when you're talking yeah. about because you still you have that shell. You've got that shell of the not shell because this is kind of who you are too. But you have that tough, that tough yeah. thing that you do. But you also, you're one of the most sensitive people I know. Sure. I mean, it's funny. I said it to our good friend Michael Vogel yeah. when we, you and I first started kind of hanging out again, mm-hmm. and when we when we were able to kind of introduce you to this space. Yeah. And I remember you because you you've wanted to, you wanted how am I doing? Am I yeah, doing? Yeah. What should I do? What, what do I do next? Do, do they like me? Do they this? Do that? And it's like it, it's first. Also, it's I think it's in every actor mm-hmm. is like that. But it's also the that there was this thing I told Vogel. I'm like, he's he's got a, he's where's that confidence? Mm-hmm. I'm like because he's got that confidence when he when he's on air, mm-hmm. and like he's so worried about what people are thinking about and doing. He's just got to, and that's I, it. Seems a lot. This is where that comes from. Yeah. And you know, so when you um. Because you and your dad, like, we, like I said, you've you've been one of those people that right away when you heard about my brother passing, you 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 called me right away. Yeah. You left me a wonderful message. It meant a lot to me. You, um, and we had we've had a lot of conversations mm-hmm. now because we've we've experienced a, a different kind of loss, but but still mm-hmm. a, a loss it's in a the family. family. Loss, it's a yeah. family loss. Mm-hmm. And we were, we've been talking about that a lot together. Yeah. And because I know how much I know how much it, it messed you up when when your pops passed. Oh yeah. Um, but it's interesting also too because it's like he shaped the toughness in you, mm-hmm. which which does I think is a tool for you. Yeah. And but there's also that thing that you know it's it's like a, it's like a catch twenty two, mm-hmm. isn't it? Um, but where did uh when you're growing up and with your yeah. dad, because your dad and your mom were married for a long time. They, yeah, they, they, got, they my, got along very yeah, well. He they, didn't take over any of that shit from the stepfather. No, no, no. Uh, my dad was he was never abusive right. necessarily. He just he didn't have the knowledge or the emotional. Uh, vocabulary to understand how to raise three sensitive kids. Like right. he, he just didn't because my mom. And it all came from him. Yeah, it all came from him. Right, right. and he didn't know that. Right, right. and so he, to him, he was almost embarrassed by it at times. So he made us ashamed of it. So he didn't understand. It wasn't until later in life. Right, and I worked hard at this because it really damaged me. And I, what was, was it, it like? Like don't like you see you cry and it's like don't cry. Like, yeah, he, like, oh like, god, yeah, I wasn't allowed shit. to cry at anything. I see. Are you kidding? No, oh, god, he would he would smack me or slap my hand if I cried. He would tell me to be a man. Uh, all these kinds of things. And yeah, like, that'll I'm, fuck you up even worse. Yeah. It did, yeah. and because it made me feel like, oh, if I show emotion, I'm somehow less manly. If a woman sees me showing emotion, she's going to break up with me or not want to be with me. Yeah. So it was all of that. So you hold it all inside, and then women, uh, then I would date these women who thought I was this like pillar of strength, and I'd have this moment of weakness, and they'd be like, what the fuck, who's this? And right. so it was a, a very, very tough uh, decades of time like figuring this all out. Right. It wasn't until... I had a breakdown in when I was 35 years old. I'm having this massive. F- I was having all these fights with my really good friends from Florida State: Vogel, Sarah. All fights these, with them? Yeah, with them. Why? Like, I mean, why? Because I would take slights and think they were like into. Um, oh, you uh, got very touchy about yes, this. I and they that. were like, yeah. they, I thought they were making massive dis- judgments about me as a person, and so sit, my friend Sarah sat me down one time. I remember a CPK at Hollywood and Highland. She said to me, "She goes, honey, you're going to lose all your friends because." We all just can't keep dealing with this with you because we need you to get help. And my, she's one of my best friends right. ever. Help when it comes to like the anger issues. Yes, or, anger okay. issues yeah. and the reason you feel slighted all the time. Right. You and it was because I was I wasn't yeah, happy yeah. doing what I was doing in my life at the time, and I wasn't happy where what I were was. You doing? I was trying to be an actor, but I wasn't one hundred percent committed. But I was temping at like I the see. Writers Guild and shit like that. And you so, feel like because you got that. Uh, you've got that thing to which uh, mm. well, we'll talk about the Schmodown, but mm. it's that thing to where you want, and and it's not just Schmodown too. It's everything I know you. Yeah. You, if you're at level, if you're at level A, you want to be at level A plus 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 uh-huh. plus. Doesn't matter. And if you look at somebody like, well, what, if they're there, I should be there. 
Yeah, they're there. I, I got to be there. And so that's probably par- part of what was going on oh, at yeah. the time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the drive of that. And it was like, well, why? But I wasn't being honest with myself that I wasn't 100% committed to being this because I wasn't making all the sacrifices that we would need to do it. So it was like all of that was going on. So there was a lot of mess inside of me. And she said that. And and I went to therapy. And so for three Because years, of that conversation? Because of that conversation. Right. Because she said, you know, you're going to lose your friends. And my, I value my friends like my family. Because of my issues with my brother and the distance I sometimes have with my sister, my friends who I accrued at Florida State are my family. Yeah, That's my family. Those yeah. are my brothers and my sisters, like, honestly. So when uh, she said that, I was like, I had to go. So I went to this place and started taking therapy and doing therapy, and it was amazing. I had a Life really great therapy. It was. Yeah. Because for three years, she walked me through it. And when we were getting close to what the reasons were, which were my dad, consequently, who had been diagnosed with cancer maybe a few months before we discovered that, right. I didn't want, I started missing the sessions or finding excuses not to go. Right. And my you don't want to deal with it. I didn't. Yeah. And my therapist called me and she goes, I know why you're missing the sessions. We're getting really close to finding out what the reason is for all the stuff that's going on inside you. Here's the deal. If you don't show up next week, I will drop you and you will have to start all over again with a new therapist. If you show up next week, then I know you're committed to this, and we're finishing this out. Right. Because you were kind of running away from it. I was. And I didn't I didn't want to accept yeah. that it was my father, and right. I didn't want to sit there. Because you were getting closer and closer to death. hmm Yeah. I understand. And while he was diagnosed, I didn't want to have that conversation and blame him and process it. But I went back. Like, I spent those days, like, thinking about it, thinking about it, like, hours and hours and hours. And then finally, uh, I made the decision. I went back. And we talk, and I just had this massive, like just what Tom Hanks does at the end when Rabisi dies and he's by himself oh, in Private Ryan, Ryan yeah. the fucking cough crying, the yeah, waves yeah, and yeah, waves yeah. and yeah. waves of tears. It was all of it there with her in the session. Right, and it's like and, this pocket and of pain that's it was, just open and it, it comes out. It was. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. called it. It felt to me, and it's very honest to me. It felt to me like these two two massive tectonic plates shifted. Yeah, and I heard them s- like scrunch against each other inside me, and then all this shit came out. Right. And it's like a new doorway you walk through. Just yeah. Like, yeah, you're right. And from that moment on, we were able to process it and understand what was happening and use my... And we didn't blame my father. We saw where the blame lied. Right. But at the end, you have to process that and forgive them. And, and understood. I'm sure you understood your understand. father more. Yes. Because like you said, because there's so much similarities. Yeah. To, it's where, because the, the, the crazy thing is that had he, and from what you're saying, he probably yeah. a million years wouldn't go to see someone to talk to about right, it. Right, right. No. But, but if he did, yeah. he probably could have had the same type of breakthrough that you ultimately did have. Yeah, and yeah. W- what's ironic is that when I had the breakthrough with my with my friends, and all my my um, friendships were enriched by that because I'm always there for them, and right. I don't feel lesser than around them. I feel driven yeah. by the things that they accomplish. And they gave you this gift. Yes. Yeah. And then in the and then when when my father was dying of cancer and he, all this stuff was coming up for him, I was essentially his therapist. And so he would call me and go like, "This is happening Look for me. That. This is feeling for me. What what's happening? What?" And I would talk him through it. Wow. So the tools that the therapist gave me, which consequently had to go because my you dad got it out of your pops. I, I Look at that. it to my father. So look so at that. I mean, that's a small gift. That's, I mean, that's, I think that's more of a small gift, man. Yeah. I think that's a big gift because the reason I say that is because when you, um, because it was, it was so hard for you to, A, to be able to talk to your dad. Yeah, yeah. And then, and you're the one, and he talked to you the most, mm-hmm. right? So the fact that he was talking to you, yeah. and the fact that, did he ever say anything to you, like along the lines, um, you know, about the things that happened when he was younger, about oh, yeah. being emotional and all those things? Yeah. Too? Um, the, when my, when my father was going to pass, and he knew, he, he was in hospice. Was, okay. Yeah, he was in you hospice. To, so you got to prepare. I did. Okay. Yeah, and he called me. Uh, I was supposed to do the SAG Awards that year. I always do the SAG Awards in January, February. And he called Go me. Go to them, you mean? Yeah, well, no, I work them. Oh, Because okay. I'm a talent spotter. Oh, got it, That's got why it. I'm good at the Shmoda. Yeah. Because I'm like, that's who, that's who, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it. So yeah, I, yeah. I'd spot talents in the truck. So he um, he called me and he said, I need you to come home. And he never did that. He was always about like, come home for a little bit and then you've got to go back and keep yeah. following your dreams. But this time is that you got to come home. And and so I came home. And for three weeks, I stayed with him. One of the nights we were there, um, we ordered Chinese foods from this place that we always, in Dale City, that we always ordered from. We lived there since 1979. And uh, um, we ordered the Chinese food. I got it. We sat down. My mom in the middle chair, my dad on the other side, me here. And uh, we're talking. And all of a sudden, we start talking about soccer. Soccer is the thing that my dad and I could always okay. talk about. It wasn't baseball. It, wasn't, it was always soccer. soccer. Yeah. And we start talking about, and then it occurred to me that I wouldn't be able to have these soccer conversations with my father for too much longer. Yeah. And then just fucking tears, man. Just while you were with him. While I was with him. And he let me cry. For the first time ever in front of him, my father let me cry. And 
he said to, and he said to me he's like I'm so proud of you because I said I was sorry because yeah. I was like oh it was my reflex to, to apologize to apologize yeah. that's what I'm trained to do for yeah, yeah, since yeah. I was a kid and I was like, I'm sorry I, I'm sorry dad it's just like thinking about you leaving and like we're not going to talk soccer anymore and I was just, and he goes it's okay and he reached over and grabbed my hand my mom is like in tears because she never saw my dad wow. reach out like that yeah. and he was just like it's okay it's okay I'm so proud of you everything you've done I know that I'm leaving you in a better place than you were before and uh, you know I just want you to know that and and I said, thank you, Dad. And I was just like, Dad, if, I just want to say this before you pass. Like, if, if, if I ever said anything wrong to you, if I ever hurt you or yelled at you from all our fights that we had growing up, I just want to tell you I'm so sorry and I love you and I'm going to miss you when you go. Blah, blah. And he said, he, he, heard, he heard that and he goes, Donnie, you're my first. And don't tell your brother and sister this. You're my favorite because you're my first. And that's, it's just by a little bit, but yeah. you are. And I know I wasn't the best dad. And I know that I didn't know how to raise you right or maybe guide you in life in the best way because I realize now as I'm older, the mistakes I made, the issues I was going through, the stuff I had to negotiate. But anything I ever did, I just want to tell you, I'm sorry. I love you so much. I thought just giving you food and putting, uh, and putting a roof over your head and giving you clothes was enough, but I didn't understand that you needed more and I want to tell you that I'm sorry, but I will always be proud of you and always everything. And so he, like, just ap apologized for everything. Wow. And so we had this incredible, like, resolution yeah. of the battles of life that we'd had. I'm so up. glad you had that, man. Yeah. I'm so glad you got that. There's so many people I talk to yeah. that I tell that story when they're telling me their stories about their their, their passing, their family members passing, that don't get that. that that's, I'm surprised you don't by it. Well, you don't hear a lot of that. That's yeah. why when... Because I'm glad that that's what happened. Because yeah. in my head, as I'm asking that, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he didn't say it's okay, and then just you know let him. That's right. it. He he knew. Mm -hmm. He knew what was in there. He knew because the yeah. same stuff that ultimately how similar you guys were, yeah. like that type of stuff that he had been holding in for so long. He let you have that, mm -hmm. and he, and he gave you that, yeah. and like that's why that's like. That's big, man. That's yeah. that's something. So I understand. I mean, I understand like you know, how powerful that must have been, and that's a mm -hmm. that's a really great thing. That's he 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 went from like he said from being maybe a father in his mind that he didn't think did the best right. from being the ultimate father because right. that's what a father does. Yeah, yeah. That's what a father does says, look, these are the wrongs that I did. Mm -hmm. This is what I know that you you needed. This is what I'm going to give to you before I, I I'm I'm leaving. Yeah, and I think that that's the you know the the, and I'm and I'm glad that you know. Obviously, not glad that the, the that he was probably in some pain mm. on, on his on his well, last couple, but like again, my brother was so sudden. Yeah, he was gone. Yeah. there's so many conversations that I want to have and wish I had, and 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 yeah. things of that nature. Um, but you got that man, and yeah. I'm, and I'm glad because you can tell he shaped you tremendously. And your mother now, I don't yeah. want to take away because I know how much your mom. Yeah. Your mom's another one. My she's, mom's amazing. She's, she's a rock. right? Yeah, so, I love her to pieces. So how does that? So let's jump into some. Let's jump into the, the end of high school here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back in the DeLorean, hop into DeLorean. We get into <laughs> high school. What kind of what kind of student were you? Were Calvin you Klein. Student? Uh, I don't know. Five. Fruit of the Loom. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Calvin Klein. I what was did you say? Uh, Fruit of the Loom. You dope. <laughs> how do you like, how do you guess what's his pseudonym? Uh, Fruit of the Loom. Yeah, it's such, such an idiot. Such an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes a blindfold doesn't work. <laughs> That's all right. To your brain. Yeah. Right. Um, but you're in uh, you're in you're in high school. Yeah, right? yeah. What kind of what, what, well? I mean, I was a, I was um, I was a. Uh, a fat kid in high school was beat up all uh, the time really? until I was like 15 years old. Oh yeah, I was bullied from like my uh, like I don't know elementary school on. You couldn't to, fight back then. No, I couldn't. My dad didn't ever train me. He didn't want me to fight because he had oh. battle. He had fought through so many things himself. So what did he want you to do? Just take the shots. He just wanted me to be better and like not get involved and not getting. But he didn't uh, understand. Like he just yeah. didn't understand. Was, right. America's so Why different. Why were they picking on you? Well, being heavy, yeah. bowl haircut, being Latino. Right, right, having parents with an you go, accent. You went to like an all-white school. I mean, not all-white. Well, but yeah, when predominantly I first, white. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I first got when we where we lived in uh, uh, Falls Church, Coolmore area, I went to a, uh, a, a place called St. Anthony's, which was basically all Latino right. families around there. So it was a lot of immigrant Wait, families. I want to quote Twitter real quick. You're not white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, all Latino families, and so I was there. But then my dad, because he saw the gang stuff was starting to become really bad around that area, That's he right. moved us out into this like white suburb of Virginia when I was okay. nine years old, um, in Dale City, uh, Woodbridge area, and 
there he he there I went and and that's when like you had to deal with some of the racism, deal with some of the right. obviously the, the the universal stuff of like if you don't look good or if yeah. you're heavy. Was that a little foreign to you too? Going yeah, there? it was yeah, all yeah, for, yeah. yeah. These cultures, these all these kinds of things. So right. people, I know I understand why people call me whites because I assimilated into that culture right. to to fit in right. for a lot of it. You know, when I changed my name from what my name was. My birth name, I changed my name. Do you say what it is? Or you, don't, old. you don't talk about your birth well, name? No, no. You know, you that's something to. I only give you don't to, have to the people I that's like. Fine. Yeah. So, um, and it was because I got bullied because of my name okay. and called names because of my name because uh, because I was a heavy sick kid, like I said. And so it wasn't until 15 years old that I finally went to my father one day just crying. I was like, Dad, I can't take this anymore. At like 15. I, yeah, yeah, 15. I was like, we got to do something. And so my dad, we drove to Kmart and he bought me these Russell weights, red, white, and blue weights that are the concrete inside the yeah. plastic things. And then that whole summer I spent lifting weights, riding my 10 speed everywhere, doing push-ups with my feet under on, right. on, on towel under the armoire, doing sit-ups rather, doing that. And so I like it was like a Rocky montage for three months. Right. And so when I went back to school, all the guys that bullied me tried it again and I and I either physically knocked them down or threatened them physically and right. pushed them back. And you lost the weight and stuff? Yeah, I lost yeah, the yeah, weight. Yeah. Got in, so nobody bullied me again after that time. That was it. Yeah. And so was it now it's like what, junior year of high school? Junior year of high school, yeah. So does it shift then? Do you do you start like you become you start making more friends? Yeah. Because like, well, I'm, I'm not gonna fuck with cool. this kid. I'm somewhat yeah, cool. Yeah, well we're not gonna mess with this kid anymore, yeah. you know, and then you become you have some friends and mm -hmm. you're playing some sports. Uh, yeah, well, no, I didn't play sports in high school. You I didn't. played sports outside high school. I was always pick pick up football for like three hours a okay. day every day after school. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not, I was a good not, student, but not for the actual school. You were you were a good. Yeah, student. Yeah, yeah. Okay. AP student, all that jazz. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a very good student. All right. So then, when what's the decision then? Um, from you graduate high school, mm -hmm. you, you got a lady during high school. Well, or? No, no, I mean, I had some girls that I dated, but there was uh, no one that not I really was ever all the felt. Way yeah, yeah, not really. Yeah, um, I mean, that's when, when I lost the weight and got in shape. All of a sudden, women noticed me, and I was or teenage girls noticed and, me. And, and you were a teenage dude, and you had some fun. Yeah, I did have some. Fun. And you had wrong some. With it. So no, not at all. So you go, and then you decide. Now, where where does the military come into play? Is that right um, after right after high school? It's a couple of years after high school because I, I tried going to George Mason University. Oh, I didn't know that. It, yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a good situation for me. It wasn't the right fit, and I joined a fraternity, and I'm not oh. I'm not really a fraternity guy, so I, it wasn't the right move for me. So why is that? What happened? So you uh, get there first year. Yeah, first year I was like it was a little overwhelming, mm -hmm. and I really wanted to be an actor, but because I'd done Model UN. Um, I went the safe route to trying, trying to study international studies and doing general. It was overwhelming how difficult the college was for me. Right. I wasn't ready. I just wasn't ready okay. mentally. And it wasn't the right move for me at the time. And so the first year just didn't, the grades were okay, but not great. And I was negotiating stuff. Then I joined a fraternity in the second year thinking that would help me be a little more yeah. involved. And it didn't take either. And it was just a bad situation. Um, and then, um, uh, one, I started putting on weight, so I started oh, getting. Really? I started getting like I, that was my first inclination of what depression was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started putting on this weight and feeling ugly. Didn't have a lot of friends. Didn't have a lot of friends. Yeah. Felt really alone. Okay. And uh, I was managing a video store at the time, or assistant managing a video store at the time to pay for college. Yeah. You know, and uh, still living somewhat at home between college and home. I would How live. long was the drive? Uh, thirty minutes. Oh, it's not yeah, that yeah, not too yeah, bad. Yeah. Um, so one day, this uh, this customer of ours, who was a, a, a recruiter at the local armed services, he comes in, and I'm in one of my like really desperate yeah. places in my life, and I just said to him, I said, "If I came there tomorrow morning to sign up, how quickly can you have me on a bus to basic?" Really training? impulsive mm -hmm. at that point, yeah. And he goes, three weeks." And I go, "Do I need my parents' permission?" He goes, "No, because you're over eighteen." So I was like, "Okay." So I talked to my friend at the time. I think his name is Rob. I, I I have yeah. no idea where he is now, yeah. but he drove me up there because I didn't want my parents to know that I was going, so I didn't take my car. Wow. Why, I, why, why did it be you, you? I mean, were you like kind of fighting with them at the time? No, I just didn't want them to change, change my mind. Wow. But do, so yeah. but in, in hindsight, though, don't you I mean because you know how I mean, because I can't imagine what the conversation was once <laughs> you told them that you had done it. But like, yeah, if my if my kids had done that, I'd be like. Why? Why wouldn't you discuss that with? Yes, that's like, exactly that's, what this goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went in there, signed up, took the ASVAB. I got in like a ninety-six, and they were like, "You can choose whatever yeah. armed services you want to go into." But because that guy was in the army, I went to the army. In retrospect, I should have done the Air Force. Yeah, Air Force prepares you better for a post-military career than any branch of the service. Okay, except a little bit, but Navy, but they're related in yeah. that way. So then um, that night, I sat my parents down and I told my the night that you signed up. Yeah, then yeah. I, I told my mom. What's it like she, on the way back, though? That's uh, the thing. Like, no, in your in scary. Your, that's what I mean. Yeah, like, I mean, what it's, you, it's, like, you've committed yourself to this. You're committed an to it. Contract. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're eight years now. You're 18 years old. 19. 19 years yeah, yeah, old. Yeah. 
it's going through your head not only of holy shit, I just did this, right. but now I got to tell my parents. Like yeah. you, you, because you you still had a little bit of time that maybe like another day or two before you could have <laughs> told them. But you were just like, I'm doing it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes so, I like to just get it over with, and rip over. the bandage. Or, so or how do you confirm. do that? How do you present it? Well, I it was after dinner, and my mom and I were just in the and I told her. Yeah. And uh, she burst into tears yeah. because she just like you're gonna die, you're gonna blah blah blah, all this kind of thing. She was really really sad. My dad left the table and went downstairs and sat in the living room, a downstairs living room, by himself in the dark. And so eventually, after I calmed my mom down and told her why I did it and all these things, I went downstairs talking to my dad. And my dad was like, "I don't understand why you did this. I don't understand why you didn't talk to us. Like, what is wrong with you that you would do this? Yeah. Like, don't you understand? Like." What's going to happen? You can barely handle my discipline. How are you going to handle the military discipline? And my dad had been in the military in Bolivia, and that's why oh, really? he, he that's why he did not uh, return to Bolivia for 17 years because a drill sergeant smacked him on the hand during training. Back then, you had to go in the military, right, right. And, and he punched the dude in the face. Uh-oh. And so you get killed for that yeah. in third world countries. And yeah. so my dad ran home, grabbed, packed the bag really quick. He leaped the wall of the base Ran home all the way home, packed his bag, and then snuck out to Buenos Aires. Jeez. And he lived in Argentina for 16 years. Because of that. Because of that. Wow. And didn't come back till the regime change happened. Wow. So all his family like grew up. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then he came. So my dad was like afraid that the same thing happened to me. Right. And I would get into these fights with the drill sergeants because the, the stuff he'd heard or seen. All right. Um, and so he was just wearing and he goes, uh, I don't know how are you going to do it. So, but in the end, they had to come to terms with it. And they, you know, they realized that I, I will do what I need to do to survive. Right. And those are those things that but you sometimes... Should, but, you, but you take yourself out of Mason at that point. Yeah, you're, I did. But, yeah. you, but you were already in. Were you, then you sign up and then take yourself out? Or you yeah, took yeah, yourself yeah. out first? No, no. I, I, I took myself out uh, after I signed up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, Damn. I just I just was like, no, nah, I, can't, I can't. And yeah. I went into... And you didn't have a friend base or anything there, too, or any Not ladies. Really. So it was like it was a lot easier to just yeah. go and do. And, and like, I left the fraternity. I left all my letters. Because right. at the time, I was living in the trailer park that they had set up there. And I left all my letters, and, and I said I retire from this. That was society. it. Wow! Mm-hmm. And you're also you're you're a very political guy. We, yeah, you know, we we know that. Like, and at the time, is were the same thing. You had a lot of strong political kind of. Oh yeah, aspects. that's that's been that's, instilled in me since I was a kid. Well, is that yeah. and is that the reason? One of the reasons why you 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 decided to join, or was it? Oh no! I'd love to say it was love for my country. Initially, it yeah. was more about life change, life changing yeah. discipline, losing the weight. Uh, Finding if finding out if I could do Join it. Join a gym. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> now you tell me. What the fuck I were know. You? No, but like you know, it, it was. But it was also about discipline. Like I had to instill some discipline in my life. I had rebelled against my father so much that he just gave up on it, and uh, my mom was really wasn't going to do it. So I knew I needed some place where I had to make myself do mm. it, and I wanted to challenge myself. And then, of course, when I got in there. You really see the people who serve this country and the people who love serving this country, and you like respect that and you adopt that because you see the pride and the nobility there is in that, and that's something that I will always think is a benefit right. from serving is seeing people who love our country so much that they would serve it in this way till they retire or right. die. And how yeah. long? So how long were you there? Total? You were there eight years. Yeah, yeah, Holy yeah. shit! So eighteen to twenty six. Yeah, you're, you're in. You're, you're there, and mm-hmm. do you? Well. You never saw combat, right? No, no, okay. never saw combat. Okay, and then and so what? What was what was the experience like in a nutshell? Um, I thought it was a very healthy experience okay. overall, um, and it was a co-ed uh, uh, training, okay. basic training, uh, and then down to Fort Gordon. I was at Fort Dix for basic, and then Fort Gordon, in Georgia, okay. Augusta. That was great, and those drills. Like that's when I started to realize that I had a little something special inside me because. The drill sergeants took a little bit more time with me. They yeah. would talk with me. They would do things with me that they wouldn't with other other cadets. Yeah. And they put me in positions of leadership and in charge of squads and things like that. So like it just na- you, I started you took to, to sense. It. Yeah, I took yeah. to it. And yeah. I had a natural like just sense for it. And so they would give me those things piece by piece. And so that was something that I and, and overall just I felt like I had a great time, met some great people in the military. Still got some, friends from them? Yeah, a couple yeah. of them, yeah, yeah, that were still friends on Facebook and what have you yeah. and, and and of that nature. But I, I would never say anything negative about my experience. I had a really great time in the military. Yeah. So then where does it transfer? Because uh, some people do or, or don't know. I don't know. You and I met at, in Tallahassee, Florida State. Right, right. So how do you then say, okay, I'm 26. I'm out. I'm, I'm back now. I get back yeah. home. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I'm going back to college. I, like, yeah, I started uh, taking um, classes at the community college, Northern Virginia Community College. And when I you was, got back. Yeah, well, okay. I was taking them, and I was like um, figuring out what to do. You know, and yeah. so um, 
I was figuring out what, where I was going to go. And by the way, I should clarify this. I didn't serve full time. That's I was in the reserves. Okay. And so I was doing that, but I was also like trying to figure out my life and managing stuff and doing whatever uh, civilian stuff. But then eventually, like you kind of, it becomes the military becomes your life. And so I started taking classes. But at, it was your career. For yeah, eight it was years. Career, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I started taking classes at the uh, at the community college to figure out what I was going to do. And I had to get my confidence back as a student because I flunked essentially flunked out of Mason. Right. And so I was like, I got to figure something out here. And eventually, well, you flunked out of Mason because you were. It was also kind of you were, like you said, you were becoming kind of saddled with being unhappy. Yeah, I yeah. was, and yeah. I was doing plays on the side without anyone knowing. Like I didn't tell my parents or anything. Like I would take time right. to go do that because that made me happier than okay. anything I was doing. I mean, so eventually, like I said, I was taking classes at Northern Virginia Community College. I got my AA degree, uh, and then I applied to Florida State. And they, where do you find Florida State? Like, why Florida State? Well, it was because I wanted to get as far away from Virginia as possible, yeah. and it was Florida State or Montana State. Okay. And I didn't want to go out to California. I wasn't like in my mind that was like something else. So that was as close as I could get to. And uh, you know, um, when I got the AA degree, I applied to both. But uh, Montana State had a great at the time had a really great Shakespeare program and a public access channel on site, so mm -hmm. you could like create your own TV shows, do your own stuff yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. That excited me. But when I drove down to Tallahassee with my dad, I I knew as soon as I got oh, out. Oh, so of they the were car. supportive of you going wherever you oh, wanted yeah, to go. Oh yeah, absolutely. They were just happy I was going to go back to college. Yeah, and they were happy to have you back from yes, the military. Yes, right, yes. right, right, right. And and but for I took a break for a year, before, like after Florida State accepted me, I took a break for a year, and I went to Charlottesville, Virginia. I lived in Charlottesville, Virginia with my best friend Maurice uh, Jones, who is who was the city manager for Charlottesville yeah. until recently. He, he went to he's at Chapel Hill now, okay. but he was a sports anchor at the time at WNBC. Channel WNBC. 29, WNBC. <laughs> WNBC right side, Channel Twenty Nine, and so I I lived with him because like, my best friend from high school. We we're best friends still, and uh, uh, that's and I kind of got my rhythm back into living life outside yeah. the military, and so I was doing that and doing the classes, and then eventually, uh, like I said, I uh, I had been accepted and then the time came for me to go or not go like either give up the acceptance or move on to the and maurice came in one day he's like if you don't go to florida state and pursue this dream that you want to do as an actor or a director or what have you um you can't fucking live with me anymore because i i know that's your dream and if you i won't allow you to hide out with me right. instead of pursuing your dream right and so he was the one that kind of talked me into accepting. Your friends have been kind of narrative in your life. Oh, yeah. Can very powerful. Kicking the nuts. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The They're truth. very powerful friends and yeah. caring from caring places, right. you know. And so totally. uh, and that's when I went. And that's I drove down with my dad uh, to try it. And my dad and I, as soon as we got it, I, I just knew Tallahassee was the place. That was it. Yeah. We got an apartment within the week. You saw the women. That's why. Well, <laughs> <laughs> listen, Florida is great. For yeah, there is. But I, yeah. And that's when I, I st and I remember the first when we moved my stuff down the first night that I stayed there that morning, the first morning in Tallahassee, officially as a resident of Tallahassee, was the morning that Princess Diana died. That's that's crazy because I know I was at I was there already. Yeah, I was at a party that night. Wow! And it was a it was yeah I've probably been there for maybe it was probably my beginning of my second year, mm -hmm. and I remember being at this big huge party, yeah. and it was a great party. Um, but it was, it was a great <laughs> party. State, it, of it, course, it was a great party. It was a great party. Yeah. Um, but. I remember on the television like that yeah. that that went down, yeah. and uh, you know it's one of those things. You remember where you were when? Oh, sure. So that and that was the it, look at that. So the, the day I'm at this party watching this thing is the day that my my uh, the, the outlaw the, the, the outlaw <laughs> entered my life without me even knowing it. Interesting. So all right, so you get yeah. there. It's that day, and then so your dad takes off. Says good luck. Yeah, he stayed with me for a couple of days. Okay. Uh, um, where were we living? Oh no, I'm sorry. No, he yeah, we moved everything, and then he drove back yeah. or he flew back that night. Okay, we had a dorm. Yeah, no, it was a townhouse off You're campus. You're a townhouse. Sorry, yeah, one sorry. of those townhouses off campus. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, you know, I was there for a few days. There, somebody had already lived. There was already there was already a roommate pre-built into the yeah, place. Yeah, they give you that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know the guy at all. Get really. along with him? No, no, no. Really weird cat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like you know what Tallahassee? You know that side yeah, of Tallahassee? Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a, a little hillbilly. It's a crapshoot. Yeah, he was yeah. a little hillbilly. He was that guy. Right. And so uh, it wasn't my jam. Yeah. But um, I remember I almost left uh, after a week of being there because I was like bail. I was scared of the yeah. fucking. I didn't know anybody. I was like, what am I gonna do? And my dad was like. This is what you want to do with your life. You said you wanted to go pursue this as an act. You said you wanted. You didn't want to be in the military more. You want. This is your dreams. Been right. your dreams. You were a teenager. You got to stay and tough it out. This is part of right. life. And so you know, those are moments. Did my you dad feel really weird? Up. Did you not weird? Uh, did you feel a little like maybe? Well, I'm a little older, and he's yes, of kids. course, right, right, right. I mean, when you're 27 and you're walking into a bunch you know, of kids, bunch yeah. of 19 year olds, yeah. 18 year olds, you're like, 
what are you going to do? And so, but luckily for me, I, I fell into a good group of people with Vogel and uh, Sarah and yeah. all of them. And we're all still friends yeah. out here. Uh, all of us, a lot of us who were friends at Florida State moved out here together. Right. And so we, we've always had that base. But and that really helped me get through. Yeah. And you started, so you, so then you said, okay, you're right, Dad, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick yeah. it out. I'm going to do this. And you go, you just start taking theater classes and yep. you get yourself and then introduced into the theater program. Yep. And you're like, because you were one of the, you, I, you were one of the few theater people that I actually got along with. <laughs> and, <laughs> I remember that. We and, talked about it. And it wasn't that I didn't get along with the other ones. I just never really vibed. They were with too them. arty for you. It, Artsy it, farts. You know what it was? It was that they didn't accept me. Yeah, that's more what it was because I tried mm -hmm. much times. There were like there are people like Emily and John and yeah, and yeah, uh, and, yeah you, Fletcher. You, Fletcher was like huge now, but and, and Hayden too. And f both of them yeah. were great. Vogel yeah. was was one of my sure. close friends too. But like there's like there were like a handful. Yeah, because I was the guy that we used to have in Florida State. There were like these big um, you know things that they would do and tell everybody what was going on the month of. Or whatever was, was happening. What were they called? Those, yeah. the, you know, the, the auditorium and yeah, those, like, yeah, those big yeah, things. Yeah. And then at the end, General Assembly or whatever, something. Like yeah, that. General yeah, Assembly yeah, was at GA. the end, and everyone would be talking about all the plays that were going yeah. on. There was all these big applause for all these people that everyone knew. <laughs> and at the end of the thing, I get up and I just started doing stand up. Yeah. And I'm like, and I would do it every single time. Yeah. I would stand up on these things and I go, hey, my name's Christian Harlow. I'll be performing here, here. And I was the only person to ever bring up stand up. I remember that, dude. None of the theater fuckers ever came <laughs> one. There was never one theater person that ever showed up, but I did it every single yeah. time. And I remember I ran into people from Florida State years mm -hmm. later and they're like, oh, I always remember you, you still doing stand up? I remember that. I was yeah. like, I am doing stand up. And then somebody else was like, hey, I saw your name at the Comedy Soul War, uh, Wall. I remember yeah. that you used to do that thing at the seminar right. and I was like yeah well where the fuck were you yeah, you right never sure. came out and said it but um but anyway but I do remember you and I don't and I was trying to think about this today because I knew we were going to be talking mm -hmm. I don't I don't remember because you were never you were never the judgy dude no. that it, I don't even know what we were probably in a class together or something yeah, maybe I don't even know how yeah. it happened that's, I think that's what it was or we probably. met like through people through friends of friends in the like you know the main lobby area of right. the theater building we'd all hang out there before classes sometimes and out in the outer areas and stuff so I'm sure I met you in that way I don't something. distinctly remember Me the either. meeting either yeah. so, but I knew that like I could tell you weren't one of these guys right. I could tell you were a regular dude and, and so to me I'm like this I know I served with this. Right. I hung out with this. This other stuff, you know, that I didn't, I didn't necessarily gravitate to. People who were like, so, oh, the theater. Right. It was never my thing. Right. I respect the theater, but I never. Oh, but was they shut you out there. It was like it was. Yeah. Like, it was a different planet. Oh yeah. It was different. You, but you did infiltrate that planet. Yeah. You, I, me, I was, I was out of there. Yeah. Like, I, well, you had other interests. I had other interests. I was doing. I, I was doing. I, I was running do. boxing leagues. I was doing. Yeah. But I, but I took my classes. I did. I did my work, and I did everything I did. I met some good friends. Yeah. From from that school for sure. Yourself and and yeah. Vogel, but um, you get out of Florida State. You yeah. do, you know, you have a nice base there. You decide with Vogel and all these yeah. guys that you're 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 moving to L.A. Mm -hmm. Is that scary as shit? Is it ever? At what point does that even become a, a possible reality? Well, I think as it was coming towards the end of the uh, senior year, that's when I was like, okay, where am I going to go? Right. You know, I'm a theater actor. That's what I love. Four years? Did you do four? Three. You did three because I, I came in. You with had all the those credits. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And so for me, I was like. Do, and I stayed an extra year, Christian, after we graduated in 1999. I graduated. I graduated in 1999. I stayed an extra year, okay. and I ran a theater company, and I directed plays and produced plays uh, and made money. And right. that was my seed money to move out to. Because you had a base at that point, yeah. you knew, and like yeah. you had a reputation. Exactly. You could do that. People yeah, knew. yeah. It was directed, comfortable and it's cheap to live. Exactly. Yeah. I directed Glenn Gary, uh, Glenn Ross, oh, awesome. and I directed uh, 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 Twelve Angry Men, a multicultural yeah. Twelve Angry Men, and, mul and gender, multi gender. So. Um, yeah, and so I built myself up. So then the year, then the year came, and I was like, okay, you can't hide out of here any longer. And I was uh, working as an AP uh, accounts payable guy for this domestic violence shelter in so, Tallahassee. In Tallahassee, so that gave me a whole new like perspective of what that situation. And I was only guy, the only guy that worked there. It was all women and really? then me, okay. and it gave me a whole new perspective of like what women go through. Right. in this life and what they have to encounter, what they have to deal with with domestic violence. It was yeah. a fascinating experience to be on the ground and learning that from all these people. Get involved. And, yeah. I mean, the fact that it probably made you feel like there's a big, bigger purpose. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and, and you develop an empathy. So yeah. all of that it was great that year that I took. And so the time came and I was like, okay, and Mike and them were like, are you coming? Are you not coming? You're coming? You're not coming? And I initially was going to go to New York. Oh, they all went already. Oh, yeah, they'd gone oh, okay, already. Right. Like six months ahead of me. Okay. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to go to New York. So, but in the end, I ended up going uh, in L to L.A. Yeah. Because I'd always wanted to be in L.A. And uh, the first five years were the worst, man. Because yeah. you're, you're Five don't, years, yeah. You don't feel like you're an L.A. person until like five years where yeah. you can you know, navigate yeah. the city. 
You know, well, that's it feels true. like home. I didn't. Well, the first month I was here, I, I was. I think a lot of people go through it. I wanted to move back right away. Yeah. Um, be, yeah. Right. I, I didn't. I like. You I get homesick. All the streets weird. were confusing, and I'm like, right. ah, just give me the fuck out of here. Yeah. And then I, then I think it's similar. You had a you had a step up on a lot of people because you had a base. I did. Because when you I have very lucky, it's very important that if, that if you can, yeah. not everybody has that that luxury. But if you have a group of friends that are already here, yeah, that's very helpful. Because yeah. I had a couple of people from Florida State, but like Aaron Wilhelm, who actually oh, yeah, cuts Aaron. our uh, our schmo down, yeah, he yeah. was here first. So I when I got out here, I stayed with him. He was living out on the beach. Mm. But you know he was out. He was kind of out farther, and I wanted to live in Hollywood and everything too. Right. And I had met a dude that I went to film school with. Good dude, lived with him. But mm-hmm. it was like still thing. I didn't know what I was gonna do. Yeah. So it's like you gotta. It's it's you gotta find the right mm-hmm. base, and you gotta find something that you want to do. Yeah. So when you get out here, yeah. and you're well, first of all, did you leave any ladies behind? Did you were dating anybody? No, in state? No, 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 no. That's no. an easier way to yeah, leave yeah. too. So you get out to. Um, and you start you start living with who? I still live with my with this friend of ours, uh, mm-hmm. Edgar Landa. He was a teaching assistant at Florida State. Okay. We had met, and he was with Tony Simotis. Remember Tony Simotis? You remember him at all? He's I'm sure face was. I'm a horrendous, yeah. I have horrible name. No worries. Yeah. Uh, well, he was a teaching assistant. We had met him because we were doing Shakespeare down there. You know, I'd gone to London for six months when I was there in Florida State okay. in an exchange oh, yeah, program yeah, yeah, yeah. in '98. So, like, I got to know Edgar a little bit and Tony, all that kind of jazz. So Edgar, I worked on for months. I was just like, dude, if I'm going to come, we should live together. Yeah. We're the same age. We're Latino. You know L.A. You're from L.A. Like, you can help me. Blah, blah. He was like, no, I'm going to live alone. I'm going to live alone. Live alone. Until finally I wore him down to the point where he was like, there's no other options. It was cheaper for us to live together. Yeah. So we lived together but over by, in Santa Monica Boulevard, by that Astro Burger. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, yeah. A block off that Astro Burger. That's where Danino used to live from. Oh, really? Right on yeah. that same block. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we lived there for like two years. And then uh, uh, eventually I moved in with Michael. With Vogel okay. and with uh, our friend Ian Carroll, we moved in all, all together for three years, and then eventually I moved out, and I've been on my on own basically ever since. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, not basically. gonna tell you where you live now, but the same spot yeah. that I'm. At, it's so funny because we lived around a block from each other. Yeah, yeah, no, it was insane. I would crazy. see you walking your dog all the time. We'd have these weird, we'd have this conversation. It'd be weird to see. Like I was just like, wow, shit, he lives so close. Why, know. you know? It was, and, and, that, and that was for, that was before we started working together and hanging out again. Yeah. But like, it, like, and then I think I moved after I discovered you lived there. Mm-hmm. I got the fuck out of it. No, 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 but I actually, I, <laughs> fair enough. Fair it wasn't because of you, but I actually did i moved i moved out of that spot because um my my now oldest daughter was about a year old and yeah. like, there was like like p- these paint chips that were falling off and that's deadly yeah. to kids so we're right. like let's get let's get out of here right. um but it was a good place it's like it's, yeah. it's a nice area and it's especially good for someone who's you know doing single just yeah. kind of you know, doing doing your own thing but um yeah so then then let's talk about kind of career then yeah. wise because Doing the acting, we, we covered that a little bit. How yeah. you were you weren't pursuing it the way that you should have been pursuing mm-hmm. it. You're getting gigs here and there, right? But what we haven't really got into was your love for film. Yeah, because like you used to watch movies with your pops. Is that oh what it was? Yeah. yeah, I mean I yeah I mean movies were even before like my dad mom because they were immigrants had to work a lot of jobs for a long time. So my, sometimes they were working two jobs. And my dad was a house painter. Mm-hmm. My mom was a hairdresser. Uh, But they would have all these other side jobs as well to be able to afford what we were living. And so, um, uh, and both both legal, by the way, in case anybody got any issues with that. Um, uh, You know, I don't have any fucking problems with that shit. But uh, but yeah, we, we, they were doing, so, so they, the woman who would take care of us, uh, Senora Lucila, she was 70 something years old. Yeah. So she would fall asleep all the time. Right. She would just plop me in front of the television. That's where I developed my love of film and television is my, both my parents and the lady who took care of me and my, my brothers and sisters, they put us in front of because my parents did not want me to speak English with an accent. Oh. They were so adamant about this because they had suffered so much in this country because of their accent. At that time, it wasn't as accepting. Right. So they didn't want their son or their son or their two sons or their daughter to suffer through it. So to me, that's where I developed my love of film and mm. television. So I would see movies before they like I would see movies at a younger age than I should have been able to sure. see those movies. It was, like, it was they easier were on back television. then. I, I was talking with somebody. I yeah. think I saw Robocop when I was like nine yeah. or ten. I should have not been watching Robocop. I saw Jaws at eight. Yeah. I should never have seen Jaws at eight. Right, right. Yeah. And so all of that and uh, so that's where I developed it. And then eventually I just started getting having a like getting into like uh, uh, stuff on PBS and they yeah. would show musicals and they would show Shakespeare stuff. And you took to show, all of it. Yeah, all yeah. of it. So Classic why, films. So why not Why not film school or trying to get the film school over acting? Well, film school was so expensive. Yeah, and it's tough to get into Yeah, and you got to really want to direct a film. You got to have something yeah. to say. And I was not a screenwriter in my mind and I was not a necessarily a director for film. I could direct a play like nobody's fucking business, but 
directing a film was a whole other ballgame for me. Right. And so I, I didn't have that necessary inclination to do that. And so uh, I just felt it wasn't. So for me, film analysis was more where I found my joy, discussing film with people, sure. talking about breaking it down, what's happening, what's the symbolism, what's the, what's, what's the director's intention. Those kinds of things were fascinating for me to explore. So I started watch, reading movie reviewers mm -hmm. very early in life. Okay. And, and one of them, which is a gift to the Smodown, is Leonard Moulton. Like, oh, right. Getting wow. to actually meet Leonard Moulton, getting to know Jesse, it's yeah, been fantastic yeah, now yeah. in this world. Jesse asked me to come and have dinner with her and Leonard at her place. And I was like, Did you do it? By, not yet. We've, oh, not we're, yet. Scheduling, we're scheduling it up. Great. But when I go, I'm going to be happy. I went and saw them do the stuff over at Arena yeah. But like Leonard was one of the guys I read. I had his big thick book every year. Yeah. Of, Such of a movies. sweet guy too. Yeah, very yeah. nice guy. But all these people I read, and so that's where my inclination. So I I devoured film all the time it. because it was so so it brought me so much joy. And they had a good movie theater at Florida State. Yeah, they there did. was a good one. I mean, it was before like you know. I mean, now I wonder what it is. But I remember yeah. back then it was one of the kind of state of the art ones. It's yeah. where I saw it. Um, uh, Phantom Menace and all those all those mm -hmm. movies. That's where. And yeah, I in the mall. The, the, yeah, big events. It was like yep. 15, 20 minutes out, but it was great to yep. go. And I, I used to love going to the movie theaters there. I would go. Yep. Sometimes I'd go by myself. I, lo I would. Yeah. I would love it. Um, it was with that dollar theater. The, that dollar the, theater. That also. Was yeah, worth yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah. a shitty dollar theater. No, either. it was good. They yeah. because they they and they, they served beer. Yes, they one. did. I love that place. <laughs> um, but but anyway, so you then LA is obviously even. Yeah. You, you explore the love for film even yeah. more so, but. Yeah. That, because then it kind of, and, and I ask these questions not because I'm involved mm. in this, this story here, because it's just the only way to kind of talk about it. Yeah. Because we met again. Because yeah. we kept running into each other. Yeah, sure. And I, I am a big um, proponent. I think that if, if, you run, if you keep running into somebody, it's not just coincidence. Yeah, yeah. It just, it, it, I think that there's so many different signs with Celestine prophecy or whatever it is. Mm. It's like, it's just so many signs and things that are happening. It's like when you, you should choose to act on certain moments. Yeah, yeah. And we kept running into each other. I think at Comic Con also. But yeah, I remember and that. And then I think that I, I, I think I got you in one to Hall H or something. Yeah. Or I saw you yeah. whatever it might have been, and we were just talking, shooting the shit. And then the next year came around, and I said, Hey, you know, I'm doing, uh, I'm, I'm doing podcasting. Mm -hmm. And I started getting into podcasting a lot, and I was telling you about it. And then I don't know how it came to be, but I remember me, you, and Ken Napsock mm -hmm. went out and had sushi. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Really had sushi. Oh shit, that's and, right. And we had sushi and I was like, Well, dude, oh, is like I was like, is this anything that you want to do? Like I do you want to thought about yeah. that in forever? I'm like, oh, Do you want to do this? Yeah. Like, and, and you're like, I'd love to because you're working on that wrestling show. Yeah, yeah, with uh, Andre. Yeah, you're yeah. working on the wrestling show. And like, I started doing this kind of thing, but it's mm -hmm. not really you know, we, we don't really know which direction to go. Mm -hmm. I know you were doing things with Schmoes, so was, I was yeah. wondering because you kind of reached out to me about yeah. that and I was like, Let's talk and then I remember when we were, because I knew you were into Marvel mm -hmm. and Star Wars and all that shit, we were doing Far, Far Away yeah. over at Geek Nation at the time, and um, and uh, Tiffany Smith and I, and I was moving over to do Jedi Council yeah. at AMC, and I said, look, Tiffany's going to need a, a co-host. You want to come in and, and shoot the shit, and, and here we are today. Well, it wasn't even, it, and, and there's more to it, because you, what happened was you, like, reached out to me, and you were like, hey, do you want to come be a guest? Right. And you want to try this out? And so I tried to, I was like, well, I'm not a big star. I'm, I'm a big star, but I'm not like a nerd deep. Like, I don't want to insult your fans. Right. And you were like, no, 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 no. We want an every guy type of guy to come in and talk about it. And I was like, okay. So I came in and a guest did as a guest a few times. And that's when you said to me, you were like, hey, I'm going to move on. I'm moving over to do right. council. Right. Do you want to take over the co-host spot with Tiffany? Which I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, sure. That's going to be great. Because I was loving it. Like, I yeah. really was. I took to it like Cut nobody's a bug. business. Cut the bug. Yeah. yeah. And I, have, so I will say It's a different world. It really is. Yeah. But it's a world that I can that I can understand and yeah. figure out. And I will say this: I've never been happier over the last three to four years I've been doing this than I was. The, like that's the happiest I've been in LA these last three or four years. Yeah. And uh, the, all the years beforehand, I just was never a hundred percent happy being the actor. Uh, voiceover, no problem. On camera actor, just really wasn't my jam. Well, can man. I tell you why I think that is? I think that's because you you have a lot to say. Yeah, you have, there's you are able to you know for look th that's the thing with you is like you can be polarizing mm -hmm. polarizing like there are times where um you know the audience will will gravitate towards you and go the outlaw rogue and there's mm -hmm. other times they want to throw you through a fucking window that's true um yeah. and but I think <laughs> but that's also that's what you bring to the t you're never boring 
And well, like the thing is, that you not. well, you're not because you want to be able to express <laughs> what you're feeling, you know, yeah. and you want to be. And I think that which is so crazy. Everything we're talking about here, it's yeah. like you've you've learned to not be ashamed of that. You right. learned to embrace that, mm -hmm. and you certainly do. Yeah. I mean, you're. Uh, I referenced the Schmodown, like the, my, one of my favorite moments of all time, and I think a lot of people who watch the Schmodown is that pure sense of honesty and and passion when you won the championship for Merle. Yeah, it's that. It, you didn't ho ho try to hide anything. Mm -mm. You just let it loose, and how much it meant to you, and and that scream of just like pure joy. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 that thing that you bring, and I think the reason you have so much fun with it is that this gives you an opportunity to talk sports. Yeah. To talk politics. Mm -hmm. To talk um, life. Mm -hmm. To talk love. Whatever it might be. Acting. You're 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 kind of. You have to get lucky to do. You're that a stuff. vessel for them. Right. Right, right. Exactly. So now, now you have found that. So it, it, it makes sense that you have kind of taken to this. Yeah. You're doing so much more now mm -hmm. because we went from far, far away yeah. to then kind of jumping around, saying mm -hmm. like, "Well, you, you, we." I remember when the first time we the movie fights. You got a movie yeah. fights. Yeah, you helped me get that, which was really great. Well, but in, you helped yourself get it because of what you started to build your reputation. But you get on there and you, and it's like, "Oh shit!" Well, it's that. Who's this guy? Yeah, because that's what you need to do in in any space mm -hmm. you're in. Mm -hmm. Is people need to go. Who's that? Yeah. Why? Uh, you know, whether they like you, or they don't like right. you. It's like if they if they, it's better they like you or they don't like you and have a strong opinion of why, as opposed to wait, who's that? Yeah. I don't remember that person. Yeah. They don't forget you. Right. No. And <laughs> and and you then because yeah. let's tie in your love for wrestling. Yeah. To which you host a show here at um, Collider Body Slam. Yeah. Um, that is now on the Wrestling Sheet podcast mm -hmm. with Ryan Satin. Yeah. Um, and that love of wrestling also led to because I I think and it has nothing to do with the fact that I, that it's my baby but mm -hmm. I think that the Schmodown really gave you that that fan base oh yeah and it gave you that because it gave you those people who responded to you mm -hmm. I can't tell you how much I know it meant to people when it was like how many Latinos reached out to me oh when yeah when you won the oh yeah when wow. you won the championship okay oh man it was just like. Thank you for you know for the fact that it's for allowing someone like a John Roca to really get out there and be That's who great. he is. I got yeah. to it. I got it all the I time. How I mean, like people awesome. people reached out because it was a matter of you and you embracing your culture, yeah, yeah. your personality. It meant a lot to people, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like you're still. I mean, you've been in this league now for like fuck four years, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like you're you're the Stone Cold Steve Austin of the league. Oh, thanks. Man. And when I call you, and you know it too, stop being modest. And like, when I, <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> you know it, and you should. And, and when I called you that, I remember calling yeah. you in the car, and saying, "Look, man, I want to take this schmo down thing. I want to mm -hmm. turn it into the WWE. Mm -hmm. And let's think of like, I want you to be, I want you to be like the Hogan, the Stone Cold Steve Austin. And we yeah. got to think of like, we said, come up with him. It's like, I love that thing you do with your hat because you you had it was you and Nost. Yeah, uh, in that team tournament the year before, yeah. and you had ready come up. Your your, your whole gimmick was the hat and the mm -hmm. mask, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what? Do, I was like, well, let's just do the outlaw. Yeah, yeah. I remember we were like outlaw yeah, Ron yeah, Bass, yeah. outlaw right. Ron Bass, and right. I was like, we'll do the outlaw, and let's just go in and see what you can do. And then you just took the ball and fucking ran with it. I, it was it was a great opportunity you gave me, um, and I and you hyped me up within that conversation. I remember because I was so excited. I was running around like looking at things in the closet and what could we do. And I took that picture with my NWO shirt yep. and I sent yep. it to you. And I was like, "Do you want? Is this the one you want to announce?" And he's, you're like, "Fuck yes, that's the one. Let's do it." And yeah, I mean, in full credit to you, I'm like, this is not a Hogan Vince injury. Like I we we did credit together, but you really took you know got. The, got the understanding of what you wanted it, it to be, and I loved the idea of doing it because of my years of watching and loving. I just gave wrestling. you. The, I just gave you the Jaeger. You got <laughs> in, Stu. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then Joe you said, Manganiello says, yeah. You, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Joey Mans. Uh, he and you said, if you if you if if this comes off for you, it could increase your fan base. Okay. Like you wouldn't believe, and uh, and you you drop these little nuggets every once in a while. And I know some people push back at you and be like, "Oh, Christian, tell me what to do." Blah blah blah. You nine times out of ten, you do have the right instinct in situations, and you were right in this situation. And you were just like, "If you get this right, if it works out." Though, and and the thing is, 
when you predict the, the, the if I beat Dan, you were like, if people get come along with you on this journey, you'll be surprised how many fans you'll pick up if you keep winning. You just got to keep winning. Right. And so for me, that was the motivation. Like, yeah. I was studying trivia. We had, we had a bump in the road in your first match. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Manson, Manson. And, you know, and that's and it was a Star Wars question, too. Yeah. And, dude, I had had a dream the night before that I was like, I'm going to lose on a Star Wars question. I just Did you really? Woke, I don't yeah. really knew that. I woke yeah. up and I was in fucking cold sweats. Oh, like, wow. Damn it. And so I took this 150 question Star Wars oh, quiz. Oh, wow. And for and some reason, so I missed best. That would, and, and so to lose that, it was, yeah. I, I was just. Well, I remember ashamed. you coming after after that match and you lose. So for people who, are, who aren't familiar with the history of the Schmodown, <laughs> John was hosting um, Jedi Council, no, Jedi Alliance. Jedi at the Alliance. Time. Uh, yeah. and, and you were hosting that show. It's the five pointer. He gets it. And if he, he get, against Scott Mance, who was his rival at the time, yeah. if, he, if he gets it, he wins. Uh, and we go on this journey where he, as he gets closer and closer to getting that title shot, right? Yeah. And he gets a Star Wars question, so it's over. It's over, and <laughs> and it's the three planetary settings in in uh, Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. He guesses Tatooine, uh, Dagobah, and then he says, "No, he, excuse me, he says Dagobah, Hoth." And I don't know. Tatooine. Two. The winner, <laughs> the Movie Man, Scott. Wait. Wait. Tatooine, yeah. <laughs> when it was Bespin, and hence it's over. But I remember you coming up to me afterwards, like they're they're gonna kill me. Yeah, the audience is gonna oh yeah kill me. Yeah, I was and, so worried. Yeah, yeah, and I understood because yeah. you know it's a, it's one of those things. And and I said, look, because I had talked so, dude, I I killed on the promos. Yeah, you the did. whole promos yeah, to yeah, get yeah. it going and then lose that well, way. You guys are screaming at each other for real. Oh, yeah, like in before you guys went after because people yeah. don't realize that like. Yeah, you can like you can play it up, and you've gone, mm -hmm. and you and and Guy and Bateman can really yeah play it up. But like when like Mance, like you guys like would would, would scream at each other, mm -hmm. and like you in know, public you, places, you would give entertainment. But like but Mance doesn't play in a kayfabe. Yeah, Mance is Mance, and Mance was like, oh you you son of a bitch, <laughs> and 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 hence we we yeah. had that, but. You turned it around. You wound up winning. You become one of the biggest names in this thing still mm -hmm. to this day. And um, and yeah, you it's 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 just a lot of fun. Yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. So there's yeah. what's your favorite thing that you out of the, all the things you do because that's that's the other thing people don't realize too. John will come to my office all the time. Like I don't I don't feel I'm doing enough. I'm like you don't feel like you're doing enough. You do so much. Fun. Shit, you're on movie talk. You're on. You produce Council. You produce Heroes. You're on a sports show. You're on a wrestling show. What what else do you want to do? So you gonna fucking do the lawn? What do you What do you want to do? You fucking racist. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> <Did> you, <laughs> right. Exactly. Now I'm gonna get all the comments. Right? No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, look. Yeah, I know. I know. The other day when uh, we were talking about the MMA show that we're thinking of doing here, we're going to do. Uh, Mark's like, you're on too many things. You can't be on the MMA show. And I was like, God, I want to be on the MMA show. Right. The thing is, I, I I'm just hungry to do a lot. And you know, the the girl I'm seeing now, she broke me down the other night. We were just lying in bed. I was talking about it, and I was like, Yeah, no, this and I just, and she goes, Honey, this comes from from when you were a kid. When people were making fun of you and people were calling you these names, you 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 have this really powerful desire to prove to people that you're an intelligent guy, you're a capable guy, you're smart guy, you can handle anything, and so you want to do as many things as possible to show what you can do. Right. And the thing is, you know, you, I think you're going to come eventually. You come to this place where you realize you don't have to do all this. Uh, you don't have to do everything. That right. you're cool doing the things that you're doing, yeah. and that's enough. You know. And so that'll that'll come in time. I think my goal. You know, look, uh, I. My goal is to have what Rogan has. It's right. a three-hour syndicated podcast where I can talk about what the hell I want right. for three hours, uh, either every day or every week, and get paid for it and be okay with it. Right. And th so if I can talk about it, if I can be on multiple shows, talk about multiple subjects knowledgeably and well, then that sells me as a guy who sure. can. Maybe. And we'll see where I go. But, like, I'm enjoying being here, and it's been a gift, you know, that – to walk into the Collider family years ago, and you helped me do that to get on the recap shows. All right, you, you were the one that like smoothed the smooth the or greased the wheel a little bit to 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 trumpet me, and they, Collider was very kind to take a chance on me. And then you know I just kept like you know badgering you, like, yeah. yeah, pushing like I really want really, and then I, I was like, well, fuck it, if it's not gonna be here, I'm gonna create it, and that's always my thing. It's like. I'm going to create it. And people, you know, sometimes people walk into this sphere and they go, how come I'm not successful in one, in six months? And right. it's like, well, no, you've got to work. Your, I mean, for two years, I drove up and down the fucking road 
Doing not getting freelance spots, freelance yeah. and, not, and not even getting paid some for some right. of the for a lot of the shows and then i d- created my own podcast and built my own stuff and do this kind of stuff and you helped me create top 10 and and uh steve and i did cinephiles and all this so i to me i was always building stuff and being on and i wanted to be on every like a movie fights what do you need me for screen junkies what do you need me for hyper what do you need me for uh geek nation what do you, uh, like everything i wanted to be on everything because i i knew that everyone else had a step up on me because they were younger right and i had to catch up and they'd been in the sphere longer and i had to catch up so to me i had to catch up by being a multiple show so people get to know right. who i was yes it's funny is that because top 10 i would say the thing that you're known for the most in this space and yeah. you correct me if you if, if you think otherwise i would say is the outlaw yeah, and yeah. top 10 yeah i would say those two things are mm-hmm. the because top 10 for me the way that kind of came about also is that it, the show itself and everything inside of it, that's all you and you and Matt. You guys, right. you, but the, the idea was when we were doing the Schmozno Network at the time, then it eventually became the Popcorn te- Talk Network. Yeah. There were a handful of shows that I already put on that network. And then when we decided that they were going to do their thing and I was going to go on mine, yeah. Top 10 was one of the shows I was going to put on Popcorn, but I said, no, I'm going to keep that one. Yeah. I'm going to keep that one for myself, and I'm going to see. It was, but I don't want to host it because I'm, do, I'm just doing too much shit. Mm-hmm. So Matt Nost was supposed to host it, at the time, I was talking to Allison Hayslip. Who I know, by the way. Who you know. Through my friend, Gabay. Yeah, They're Allison, really good friends. Um, I was talking to my buddy, Graham Bunn, mm-hmm. who was a guy I met on during my time at The Bachelor. And then there was one other person. I can't remember who it was. There was supposed to be four people on this mm-hmm. panel. Oh, wow. And then it just kind of fell apart. Allison couldn't do it. Graham couldn't do it. And Matt's like, I still want to do it. Mm-hmm. So then I remember we sat, you, it was me, as a, I called you up, and I was like, would you want to do this? He, yeah, I guess so. Like, let me, let me, and I said, like, do you know Matt? Like, you know, I, don't, I don't really know him that well. Well, you, you offered Marvel, DC, and Top 10. That's right. And I said, Top 10 feels more like my thing because I can talk about Everything. multiple things. Right. I suppose I'm only That's limited right. to DC, I'm limited that. to Marvel, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so then we sat you guys down at... Uh, at at um, a coffee bean, yeah, and right, not too far from, from yeah, the your Grove. place, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we sat down. You guys kind of did it, and then the relationship began. Mm-hmm. And what was funny is, um, I don't know if you guys have spoken about this on the air, and if, and if you haven't, then you can, you can yell at me. But like the first, <laughs> the first like six months was a little rocky. Oh, it was rocky. Yeah, it was yeah. rocky. Because because Matt's a different cat than I am. He's one of my favorite people. But he's such a fucking grouch. He is a grouch, and, 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 he'll and he wants it. things his way. I love him, but I, and I and I, yeah. he really is. My brother and I talk about it too, like all the yeah. time. That uh, Matt's one of the funniest dudes that's you'll what, ever meet. That's the gift of Matt. I love Matt Nost. I do. He's and I love him because he's so grouchy. Yeah, and and, the, and Matt is very funny and talented, yeah. and so and we have great chemistry. People are always like amazed that we haven't known each other for like twenty years. Right? No, you have. A, it's good. A good. We just vibe. had an easy chemistry yeah. because we're t- both different people, but we do love movies right. and we do watch a lot of movies, and so we like to talk about them. But what the first few months was really rocky because uh, we're just such different personalities. Right. It's, Trying to figure out how the show is working. Exactly. Right, and, right, right. and Matt like really didn't like that he was kind of in his mind taking the secondary role to me. But we had to have. A, I remember we it was after a thing at the popcorn talk or after Buzz, and we drove over to some Applebee's there around that area where you guys were at the no, last it was a, No, no, no. It was a Schmoes No Show we were doing. Oh, yeah, and yeah. it wasn't Applebee's. It was that other bar that we were going to, and it was like, it was just like let's talk this thing out. Right. Yeah, right, right. And, right. Was, and that was it, though, and you guys were, yeah. I think, cool ever since. Yeah, because I said to him, I said, brother, I... It's my name first only because I'm hosting the show. But you're the you're the color. You're the funny guy. They're gonna talk about you more than me. Right. You gotta let me set you up. And so th- once he accepted that, understood that we we're gonna be equals in this. That's when everything kind of kind of settled down. And it did. And what a kind of cult following you guys yeah. had because you know we tried to do it as a video show on Collider for a bit, and the fans went ape shit yeah. when we took it off but it just it just wasn't working as a video not show not the way it was built yeah yeah not, it, right because it was, no fault of anybody else we it, tried it and no and we've yeah. proven on this thing, on collider already in the last couple of months that there are certain shows that just work better in podcast yeah. form and you guys you had so much more freedom yeah. to to do it in the an hour and a half two hours mm-hmm. however long you go you can just go yeah. and the show still d- performs very well mm-hmm. and the schmoes no podcast feed um the the chemistry is still there obviously yeah. it carried over into the schmo down and yeah. I, that's why, so out of all these things that we're talking about here, if you were to say, like, your career highlights in regards to this space, what are your wow. car- what are your career highlights? Well, obviously, winning the title against Merle, Merle, right? Um, uh, I think recently the, the big one has been the fans with – uh, top 10 wanting us to come do live shows. Oh, cool. That's insane to yeah. me. So, um, 
this is a difficult question to answer because like I have great memories in everything. Yeah. I mean, like, you know. But if you, I mean, but again, but you know, if someone, if someone this says to you, if you're sitting around and people are yeah. talking about like, this is, you, this is what you do. Yeah. I do this, 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 and this. And someone said, what are your career highlights? For, for example, like me, it was, it's creating schmoes. It's, yeah. it's creating the schmodown. It, it's ha- Jedi council. It's yeah. Collider live. It's, it's, there's, there's a lot of different things that I would say. Inside yeah. Of that. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I think earning a spot on movie talk uh, for me is has been a very career highlight because i remember when i first came on i was like i was like i want to get i want to get i want to get there and you know it just took time patience and time and things happening in certain ways and so uh, that's that to me is a sense of accomplishment i i, I think interviewing the rock twice oh yeah dude the the i can't thank this space and you enough yeah. for having that chance to do that you know and twice and having him remember me the second time with the belt that's that cool. was incredible yeah. as well the outlaw. I mean, like, how can you not? Like, that is something that I had no idea if it was going to work or not work. And you became I, a wrestling character, yeah, like a legit wrestling. Character. And I took a lot of shit. People say, "Oh, these fans now they say stuff." Blah blah. I'm like, please go through all my matches the first year I was a heel and find the millions of comments that I got that denigrated who I was as a person, my heritage, my weight, my look, everything. I took it because I was a heel. We had to build the league, and I enjoyed being a heel. It was a lot of fun, but I took a lot of shit, too. People, don't people reali- forget. And people, people don't realize as much, though, that you were really the first person to really take kayfabe and, yeah. and the wrestling side and, and introduce that into the league. Because now it's pretty big with, yeah, with, yeah. with Guy and Lon Harris and mm-hmm. every everybody, like Bateman, and all these dudes that do this. Now you paved the way for yeah. it because they, they had to get used to it. Yeah. I think you were the first person to really say Because when people saw you, other competitors, mm-hmm. they said, oh, that's what, that's what we can do. Yeah. That's what we're allowed to do. Oh, right. the outlet. Because... A lot of people had no idea what the hell was going on right. first when you first started, and right. then they're like, "Oh, okay, he's playing a character. Yeah. He's talking shit. Like, what's happening?" <laughs> yeah, and, then and took, some yeah. of the competitors took it seriously, right. which was, which which I had to take that shit too because some competitors didn't like me because I would do that, right. and they couldn't get the best of me in these exchanges, and it would have it would it would hurt it would offend them or hurt them or right. bother them, you know. And um, but but you know those are the things that I that I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, Outlaw Nation. Becoming a thing has been incredible. Like people were really responsive to that. Obviously, top ten. I yeah, mean, top ten is probably the thing. Like, yeah. I love everything I do at Collider, uh, but I love you top get very 10 excited just for equally. still and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's um, great. I want to do two more things here before yep. we leave here too, because on September eighth, uh, oh, you got you've been in. We you talk about live events that we've done. You know, mm-hmm. for the Schmodown. Shit, that's a fucking career highlight. Oh, the live that event. first live event. Yeah. That first live with JT being able to say Outlaw Nation have two hundred to three hundred people Going screaming yeah. with you. Yeah. You can't ex- you cannot trade that off. Right. Like, it's such an incredible feeling. Well, you got a chance to do it again yeah. here on September eighth. But this time, speaking of how you know Dan Merle and you guys went from being uh, uh, rivals, yeah, to you've always had respect for Dan. Of course, but, Dan's a great champion. But great when, time. But when you guys were playing each other, there was some shit talking yeah. going on. Yeah, you can see those old promos. There was rivals. I mean, mm-hmm. there was rivalry. I mean, when you want when we tried to get you on to play against in, in movie fights for the title, and he went after you. You got to win matches in order to play me, buddy. Oh, and oh. then you guys went after each other. I mean, you guys would talk some shit, and that's one of the greatest matches yeah. of all time. It's still got over three hundred and twenty thousand views on it. It's 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 one of the most highly watched title matches mm-hmm. we've ever done. And then you guys now are teammates. Yeah, and you're playing each other. Like what is you guys ready? Yeah, I think we're ready. I've yeah. never yeah. seen Dan Hunger. You know, everyone was like, oh, the Andrew guy, the Andrew guy. And, and you know, you you talked to me after the match quickly, and you were just like, dude, Dan needs Dan is down. He needs to pick me up. And that's, I was like, I got it. Don't, yeah. I, don't sweat it. I got it. I got on that mic, and I said exactly what was going to happen. Was Dan Murrow was going to shake this loss off and come back hungry. That guy won't stop texting me now. He is he right. is. He is ready to go. He wants to win so bad. He 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 took that loss like a champ. It bothered him, and he came back hungry, which is exactly what I said when I said to the fans, "I said he's coming back. An angry, driven, hungry Dan is a scary Dan for the rest of the league." And I've never seen a guy. You've created a monster. You went in there, you put electricity in that man, and you woke him the fuck up. And now he's coming back. And I'm happy to be yeah. just lucky, fortunate to be by his side and do what I can do to help him win in this tag team tournament. Well, September 8th. he is the lead dog in this situation yeah. i'm happy to as the leader of the horseman i'm happy to sit back well, i can't wait to watch it as a fan myself it's yeah. september 8th it's dan merle and john roga going up against stacy howard and winston marshall yeah. in the first round first match of the anarchy tournament it goes down on september 8th you guys can come out check it out uh 50 60 tickets left not really, really? sure but yeah they're going they're why going are there break. tickets left what is wrong with I, you I buy tickets Go do you want to see the two greatest of all time 
uh, Sam Levine, you retired. Two greatest of all time come together to go against two formidable con contestants in in Winston and Stacy. Stacy's no slouch. Winston isn't either. So it's going to be a knockdown, drag out fight. Trust me on that. And so you should not miss the opportunity to see Dan live and me live. And you know the promos we're going to do together: a hungry Dan and a driven ro a driven outlaw. That's the combo that you're looking. Stacy's going to have something really funny planned. You know she has great uh, great entrances, and Winston's fantastic as well. So what are you going? Wh why That's wouldn't it. you come out? And then Mara. Mara and going up for, for, for and, Mara. Oh, Mara. Sorry, Mara and Inman. Inman for the title. So the horsemen are ruling the night. I know. And we'll see what happens if all of us go home sad or if we go home victorious. We're we'll gonna, see. We're going to see. Well, Dan's going to be in a position that if the yeah. horsemen go, all go home victorious, he might go home sad. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, and I was speaking to the outlaw. And yeah. The outlaw said he's okay with whatever Dan chooses to do, whoever he wants, whoever he wants to support. It's that one night he gets a free pass. To do I, see. To do. Yep. I see. Um, so check that out, guys. Schmodownlive.com. You can get the tickets there to see John and Dan together uh, as a team, which will be amazing and probably our last live event for a little bit. So mm -hmm. last thing here, I've been doing this the last couple of one-on-ones. Oh, okay. done. Um, I gave Katie the opportunity to do this. I gave Heidi the opportunity to do um, can I just let it spin because I've been grilling you here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go in after you. I'm going to give you a couple questions that you can give me. Oh, anything that you want to do. Interesting. Uh, it's, that's that's kind of like the last spin of the show because it's it's only fair because I said every time people sit down here, I always really get into them and ask them things that I've always wanted to know. So it's it's now in your court. But to warn you, we only have 30 seconds. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're, 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 but we're going to. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got to wrap up soon. Soon. Yeah. Anything, anything I want to ask? Yeah, you can ask me. And you can be honest. Well, yeah, it just depends. I mean, I might do the same thing I told you. It's just like that's one of the things I don't want to talk about. Okay. Yeah. What really happened between you and Sacco? I mean, I, we talked about that on, on. You did? Yeah, in the one. -on -one. You got in depth about it? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we, okay. She, it was we we had we had dated on. Yeah, that's um, a beautiful woman, son. She is. She was, and she's awesome. And talented she's as hell. Super talented. Yeah. Uh, my wife's pretty. Yeah, so you, your wife is extraordinarily gorgeous. Look, yeah. You don't do bad no, don't in this do, department. I've, I've done. I've, done, I've always done okay. Very like, smart, intelligent women. You did. Yeah. Well, that was. You know, the thing with Katie is that we we talked about it too. Mm -hmm. She was on the kind of on and off thing. We had it was that like two month kind of like flaring yeah. relationship, and then it was. Uh, you know, she was working a lot. She wanted. She was doing the final season of Bowser. Yeah, yeah. She was going off to do her thing, and then it, it just, just eventually just, fizzled out. Just didn't work. Okay. Yeah, but it, we but we stayed we stayed friends. We talked about the conversation that we okay. had on the air. Then we doesn't count. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> What, why do you, why are you driven to do the things that you do? What is it about, what's innate about you? Because you've been doing this since you were a teenager, man. What yeah. is the innate thing in you? Is it your parents? Is it you? Were you just born with it? What drives you to do what you do, to lead the way you lead, to be in charge of things the way you are, to create these things that you create? Because, brother, a lot of things have fallen apart for other people, and yeah. you keep moving forward, you keep moving up. What is it that drives you? Because I pushes feel you? like I'm the dog chasing the mailman. I still haven't caught the mailman. Really? Yeah. I just I, I'm always feeling. I still okay. I still haven't caught him. It's yeah. like it's like still every single time. I like I feel like I get closer and closer because even people are like oh you did so well with the schmodown. I'm like at a twenty percent out of the hundred percent of where I want to be with the schmodown. Wow. Uh, it's like you know you did so much with like the schmoes and Clyde mm -hmm. alive. I feel that schmoes ultimately failed to be honest with you. I don't, I don't feel like we did everything with schmoes that we could have done or should have done. I think that you know Clyde alive it's so good. There's so much more that we can do. It's mm -hmm. like I always feel like there's more that we can do because I know it's not. I think I know there's more that we can do. It's mm -hmm. just like sometimes I just don't think that. Things don't always happen, and yeah. you can't say, "Oh, sh I think that the biggest problem that people do sometimes is they bl there's blame." Yeah, there's blame for stuff. that's like, "Oh, it didn't happen. How come that person's doing it? Because I can't do it. Uh, it's it, they, they, if, if they did it, I should be able to do it." Mm -hmm. And then, "Oh, this," and they, and they do a "What was me?" thing. That's right. why I, I it I can't do that. I got to find a way. I've been knocked down so many times. Yeah, man. That I go, we just got to find a different way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, people would be surprised to know that, man, because they see all your successes. They don't know the times you've been knocked down or the things that didn't work oh, all or that kind of thing. They don't know how much. That's interesting, man. Because yeah. I, I, there are people like like you're driven in this way. And I think that's where we have a little bit of kinship in that I never think it's enough either. Right. No matter what I do, I never think it's good enough. And I always think I have to be better. It's not something to beat myself up about. That's been the greatest thing about therapy. Right. It's not something to beat myself up. It's about moving forward and passing stuff. There's just more to do. Exactly. Like, there's exactly. so much more to do. Because yeah. like I, people always say, like, with Schmodown, right? It's right. like we... You know, we have we have a very nice little amount that we that we get from Patreon, which yeah. I'm so thankful mm -hmm. to the patrons that do. Yeah. But 
it's a fraction of what I need in order to get people on the road, mm -hmm. do live tours, go do you know two, three shows a month, yeah. um, get more bigger props, better set, uh, bigger talent as yeah. far as you know celebrities coming in, all these things, pub publicists, websites. Mm -hmm. There's so much money that goes into stuff that I don't have. Right. And and Collider's been super great yeah. in regards to house it here, shoot it here, promote it here. Right. But there's only so much that that goes before it's just a, it's just another show, right? Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It needs. To, it, I know it can be bigger. I know that a lot of things. I like Clyde Alive. Like yeah. Every, like Clyde Alive to me is is a very different show than what most people like in our space. I mean, sure, like guys like Rogan and 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 there's sure. other people who do that, that. Those types of or Stern, obviously, yeah, yeah, do Stern. those types of shows. But we're the only show that does that in the movie space. Yeah. And like you know, and I'm sure now someone else will try to do it. That's just what that's just <laughs> what happens. Always what happens. But like I'm. Uh, I'm excited about it. I want to do more with it. I want to keep doing it. I want to push it. Like, pe I think that the thing is I get off on people telling me that it won't work and it can't work. Mm. Like, sh I had people tell me, Schmoes, sh it won't work. Like, wow. the two people, yeah. two people, no one's going to watch two regular guys just talking movie. I had someone tell me a movie trivia show with wrestling. Who, who's going to watch that? And then recently, six hours a week they yeah. want uh, just do do it once do it for an hour once a week i'm like no i'm doing it six hours a week like you have to stay strong in what you believe yeah and otherwise you know it just you let people dictate your own dreams well i tell you every time we ran into each other um through the years before we we hooked up into this space i remember i remember the joel silver's conversation yeah i remember when you were starting schmoes and I had that thought. I was like, but you guys aren't like credited movie reviewers. Right. Who's going to watch? And I had no idea. Right. right. I didn't understand the YouTube space at all. So I was always like, well, fuck, I hope you guys succeed at it. I hope it works out. Right. And then when it was, and then like a year or two later, you guys are in that studio and you're doing it and you have people and all this kind of, and I was like, this is incredible. And progression, progression. So to me, to be able to be a part of it now in this situation is interesting to be on the inside baseball type of thing right. and seeing it all as it plays well, out. It's a belief in yourself. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's believing in yourself and, and a vision. It's, it's like any, any yeah. creator or anybody will tell you that too. It's like you've got to, if you have an overall thought and idea that you know that can work yeah. and you believe in your heart of hearts it can work. Yeah. You got to go through everything in in front of you in order to make it work because yeah. it's too easy to go. Oh yeah, they're right. Well, okay. that person like so many people who had done stuff before. Like there was a producer that I won't mention their name. Like told me that when I was doing the Schmoes No Live show, mm -hmm. right? Like when we started, it was like, oh, no one's gonna watch long form stuff. Right. No one's no one wants to watch. It. Cut it to ten minutes. I was like, it's a long form show. No one no one's gonna watch that. And right. This is before anybody was doing this. Mm -hmm. Then that person went out and created a. Uh, an hour and a half. Well, told, but but told yeah, me. Yeah. Came on the show and then said, and then said, um, "Oh, you were right." And then did their own show of and about an hour and a half, two hour show. Uh, and then Should then it started and then it started happening all over the place. So yeah. it's like people. My dad always said this, and I've talked about this on this show. Is my my dad's a people by their nature doubt. Yes. And because they've been let down so many times. Yeah, and it's just it's in our nature to say mm -hmm. that won't work. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Is it? It's that's why a lot of people like to be safe. But yeah. it doesn't mean they're bad people. No. It just means that people doubt. Yeah. I don't believe in those people. Haters yeah. <laughs> haters haters feed yeah. those of us who are trying to like surprise, shock the world and pursue our dreams and do whatever. And right. I love that. All right. Uh, one last question I want to ask yeah. you. But like you I don't know and you can choose not to answer. Yeah. Um uh, you asked me about my dad. Yeah. And I got a bit emotional, but I do want to ask you, do you have a favorite memory uh, uh with your brother that passed? Yeah, I mean, I got I have funny ones with him. Um, but do you, you have a like one that like is quintessential you and him, like like encapsulates your relationship? Yeah, it's just it's but it's 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 funny it's funny moments. Okay. You know, it's, it's like we used to every Christmas, like he used to put on the his his Santa hat, right? Mm -hmm. And he would dance to, to to this. He would do this goofy, silly Santa baby dance, right? <laughs> but he would just uh, he he would make the whole place laugh and he would just sit next to me and he would always say the same thing every single time i love you chris i love you wow. and he go, i love you christian like he and every conversation with i love you christian make sure the kids know their uncle kevin make sure wow. the kids is like it, it would be he'd ask me he i you know one of the things i think one of my favorite moments was at star wars celebration um mm -hmm. from two years ago or whatever when we went to orlando he came out to see me and he and he's and he just put his arm around me and he said hey i just want to show him I'm, I'm really proud of you I'm really, I'm really proud of you, and uh, and and I. Someone came up to me, and I and I went, "That's that's my brother," and because they saw me, you know, talking to Jedi right, Council right. fans and everything too, and like he was just, um, and his music, 
I think it's it's he used to call me. That's that's my favorite moment actually, and I talked about this at his service. Mm. Um, my brother was a guy that he could hear music. I mean, we're talking. Wow. I told I, he would hear it. He couldn't play it. He could hear it and just play it. Yeah. I'm sorry, he couldn't read it. He could play it, and he was amazing on the piano. I'm going to launch his uh, a YouTube channel with all his stuff. Cool. We were walking through the mall, and I heard some song, and I go, "Wow, I love this. What is this?" And I listen. He goes, "You like that?" I think it was like 16, 17 at the time, and no, I may have been 18. And he goes, "Come on." And we walked over to this piano, and he just started playing it. First time he heard wow. it. Wow. Just started playing it. But he, my favorite moment, I think, is he told me. He's like, you hear music the way that I do. I go, no, I don't. He's like, no, you do. He's like, because he asked me some questions. Yeah. I was like, I, I don't hear it the way you do. And he was like, no. And he wanted to teach me yeah, how to play, and he just never got around to it. Right. But like, uh, that meant a lot to me because he's, I, his music was, yeah. I mean, I, if I listened to it now, I'd be bawling like a baby because he's just so, yeah. he, he was, it was beautiful. Um, so when he told me that, that to me meant a lot because I know he wasn't a guy that would just say, yeah. like he, he would be like, you know, that he would encourage everybody. Like you know, my yeah. dad, my dad at like at 72 is writing music and like trying to do stuff. And like, and my brother was like, that's, you know, great dad. Good. Yeah. Keep going. Go for it, dad. Um, but it was just, he and I were very, I realized that his service, how similar we really were. Yeah. But even though like I, I was always closer mm -hmm. to my brother, my, yeah. my Brian, to Brian yeah. um, Kevin and I were more similar than I even realized. And when we were all these stories and everything we're talking about, and just like the, the toughest thing and greatest thing I think was, you know, we had the service and when I walked in, uh, my dad told me that this was uh, going to be, but it was seeing it and then mm -hmm. hearing about this one thing. He was um, he was actually in a he loved hoodies. Oh, nice! He loved hoodies. He was in a Schmoes No. Oh, dude! Hoodie for um, when we got to see him. Wow! So um, I was driving with my dad, and um, I was driving on the phone with my dad. Yeah. And he sent me one of my brother's hoodies, and I'm supposed to be getting it today, so um, I'll wear good. it on the show a couple times. But like he. Um, I asked him. I didn't really think about it. And I was yeah. like, "Do you um? Did you?" Do you and I said, "I don't want it back. I'm just curious. Like, do you, what's going to happen with the with the the Schmoes hoodie?" Mm -hmm. He's like, "Well, they, they cremated him, and and I knew it was being cremated. But I yeah. think like and like that, it that piece of me, yeah, goes with him. Went with him. Damn, dude. So um, so that that I guess all of that together." Yeah. That's fantastic. Man. So that's it. Honestly, so, that's fantastic. But, I mean, we went deep, boys and girls. <laughs> we went deep. We went deep here with me and Roca. Um, we learned a lot about each other. Listen, um, we're goofy fucks, but we feel things. Yeah, that's that it. Was, we feel things. Yeah. That was it. So I hope you guys uh, got a good uh, episode. This is exactly what I thought it would be, man. Yeah. You're, you're the most honest dude that I know. Um, we could have talked for about four hours. Sure. But we're going to shoot a scene with uh, Roca and Kalinowski. Oh, spoilers, motherfuckers. Oh, shit. So, all right, guys. Um, thank you. Make sure that you subscribe to all the stuff that John's doing. You can find them on Collider Video, obviously. Check them out at uh, you go to the Schmoes feed, get top 10. Mm -hmm. You can check out the, the Cinephiles. Yeah, the Cinephiles, that's on iTunes and on Stitcher. Yep. And then, of course, Outlaw Nation Outlaw still Nation. on there. When I when I get around to recording episodes, yep. people have been very patient with me on that. I think we're going to try to get this episode up today. Um, oh, and well. if you're a patron, you can go and check out John's match against Ben Bateman, that's up on Patreon now, but if not, it'll be on Friday uh, live on Collider Video, so make sure you do that. And one more time, September 8th, The Outlaw and The Dangerous One, Dan Merle, go to battle and the first round of Anarchy. Thank you guys so much. Make sure that you rate and comment on this podcast here. If you're watching on video, it's the YouTube channel, the Collider Podcast channel, so subscribe, leave comments. Do it all. Guys, for The Outlaw, John Roca, I'm Christian Harloff. We'll, uh, we'll catch you next time. That was it. That was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're joining us for the first time on Collider Video, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all that stuff. And remember, this is also on iTunes. If you're listening to iTunes right now, pull over and then rate it, subscribe it, do all that stuff. Hit pause on the treadmill for a second and let us know what you think about these shows. And we will continue to make more of them. You can find all your favorite shows from Collider on iTunes on the Collider Podcast Network. Thank you very much. See you next time.